Hello everybody. Welcome again to, you know, the huge. Kate, what do you got for the people of the planet? Well, you can get your official, unofficial, funky casuals team merch on my Redbubble. Uh, very nicely modeled by Lex. Thank you very much for supporting. Uh, and you can get one of your own at my Redbubble shop, as well as a bunch of other designs on my shop. Go check it out. It's a fun time. Yay. Yay! All right. So, last we left off, you all um, entered the city of Elkamir, possibly during the War of Ascension, saw Asmodeus crumble to the ground, and saw this whole conflict kind of fast forward and then kind of just disappear. Uh, returning a city to its devastated ruined state, you moved forward, uh, taking a map from a crushed corpse, and with a Chrono Recall spell, Antir saw the corpse running away from a giant worm with hands that pulled it along. Uh, as you explored the cemetery outside, uh, you encountered some of its offspring in a ditch, and fought some of them, because they could pass through the magic circle. Um... Dealt with those. Uh, came across a dilapidated chapel and inside, after triggering a trap, successfully left with a ninth level spell scroll of true resurrection and a ro rod of resurrection. Uh, eventually you all came to the central ward of the uh, of Elkamir called the Comedius Ward, and it was just piled with bodies and wet thwapping noises. Um, Antir learned that you were all under the effects of arcane blight while in this city that would turn people into Nothics at some point. Uh, you discovered an obelisk that had that unknown school of magic kind of emanating around it, and Antir pressed a hand, their hand to it and opened a doorway that you all entered and seemingly fully went back in time to the War of Ascension. And you were in the basement of this uh, 12 foot tall elf named Dalen, who seemed confused as to how you showed up here, not believing where you came from, uh, seemed curious about your predicament, and decided he would take you to the nursery since you had the sapling. And he took you out of his house and you started to wander the streets of El Khmer. So, he leads you through the central ward of the city, and you pass by numerous Elkamirians, these 12-foot-tall, pale, bald elves that seem to be placing magical arcane sigils across various surfaces across the city. Um, and also, they're, they're being assisted by humanoids much like yourselves, so not everyone here is big ol' elf. Uh, he takes you down a large central thoroughfare and stops by a small stolen building built into the base of this, like, large, blooming willow tree. Uh, we need to stop here first. Pulls out a pouch of this, like, blue powder and then just blows it over all of your faces. Uh, Shroud... Um. Shroud Dust. It should help you understand any spoken language unknown to you for time, uh, as not many people here speak the common tongue. And he pushes will, it. Will this help us understand sarcasm? It should help you understand any spoken language, so hopefully you could understand sarcasm. Okay. That seems really cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, he pushes the doors open and steps through, and inside is this quaint alchemist shop. Uh, shelves are filled with peculiar ingredients, potions, and chemicals. Unusual plants are kind of growing out of every corner. Uh, there's an elderly woman uh, in a hooded shawl, busy cutting up flowers and grinding them in a mortar. Uh, just a human woman. Uh, she looks up, her dull blue eyes kind of meeting all of yours. Shoulder-length thinning white hair gives her the appearance of a sweet, kind of small, little, hunched-over grandmother. Uh, sorry to disturb you, matron, uh, but these individuals are looking to enter the Eldir Nursery. Uh, I know you like to meet and greet, meet and grant permission to those wishing to enter, so... Here they are. 
and the old woman kind of hobbles around the counter with the help of this gnarled wooden cane. Oh, they can be trusted, dear Dalin. You may doubt their origins, but I assure you their story is true. I, I apologize, but I must ask, um, you are human? Yes! How did you... They call me what are you? Matron. Uh, pardon I... my uh, indiscretion, but what are you doing in a city full of elves who are twice your size? Well, you must have seen the other humanoids helping out along the way. Did we? Yeah, I mentioned it. Oh. Never mind, I resend my question. Okay. Uh, Dalen nods. Uh, perfect. I have some business to attend to, so I'll leave you all in the matron's very capable hands. And he departs. Just leaving you all with this little old grandmother. And just as he leaves, she approaches the door, hobbles over there a little bit. She's maybe like five foot one when she's hunched. And she kind of hobbles over to the front door, locks it, and turns to you all. Secrets shared in hushed tones in dark rooms must not permit eavesdroppers and intruders. She giggles cheerfully and steps through a beaded curtain made of bones and dried flowers. This way, new friends. All right. Uh, Vonkar follows, and so does Doe. Oh, and Flitz is here, too. I keep forgetting. <laughs> Justin makes a note to himself. Gotta kill him off. Oh. And then murder him. <laughs> Next. Already done. With, it, <clears throat> with him the hour. <laughs> Georgia limbos underneath the beaded curtain. Perfect. Touch the weird bones. Yeah, it's like little, like, animal bones. Like... Oh, yeah, Anter's magistrates would have just... Okay, perfect. No one. Little rattle. Uh, the back room is a macabre sort of sight. Long dead animals hang from the ceiling that are drying out amid a kaleidoscope of colorful flowers and vegetation. Uh, the air is thick with like this damp, musty, earthy scent, mingling with overwhelming aromas of spices, herbs, and flowers. That's a weird smell. Uh, there's a large cauldron kind of in the center of the room. And as this, as the matron, as she calls herself, shuffles around, she stands a bit more upright and sets her cane down on a nearby table, clearly not needing it. So you wish to enter the Eldia nursery? Well, I can happily allow it, as you are all both new and old friends of mine. Oh, how exactly do you... Can I, like, get a closer look? Just looks like an old woman. Trust and friendship were earned by you many, many years from now. Can I <clears throat> what is your name? Uh, she smiles and her blue eyes briefly shift to a bright yellow with pinprick pupils and then back to blue again. But keep oh. in mind, new and old friends of mine, that once you plant that which you possess, the time you came from will slowly begin to disappear. But there are ways to preserve certain threads from that time, which you may soon discover. And she reaches deep into her gown and produces this iron key ensnared in thick roots. For the nursery, be careful and be mindful the guardians of that place are no friends of yours, but they are of mine. Be respectful, be kind, and they will allow you entry. She smiles wide and hands the key to Antir specifically. And then what she says next seems pointed at Antir. Regret brought you here, dear child. A path you followed in a time so far from now. And also a time having yet to pass. And those first steps to eternity are about to begin. <laughs> memories are powerful and memories are eternal. You saw a vision within the arbor. 
and that vision is about to unfold. Remember and you will succeed. Remember and you will survive. Remember and everything you and your friends have done both now and so far from now will have meaning and a purpose. You only need to remember when the time comes. All right. Uh, do you have anything to drink? Yes, of course. One second. And she, like, reaches into, like, a cabinet and pulls out this, like, dusty tan bottle and just sets it down. Okay. You smell it. It just smells like fermented fruit juice. Okay. Oh, God. Oh, God. Yeah, it's just wine. Gren will pass it. Offer it to other people, not Von Carr. It is going to take a little. A teensy swig. It's like, yeah, it's like camaraderie. A wine that was made from, like, weird fruits. So, regrets and memories, it seems. Yes, and you have a very big regret weighing on your shoulders, don't you? No. They are a big bird. And as she's staring at you, Auntie, you can see the eyes again flicker from blue to yellow. <laughs> well, I think we need to go. They're all right. Oh, yeah, well. The door with the key. Best of luck. You'll need to go to the very center of this ward. You'll find the nursery. Is it just like when we did the maze? Do you want me to just run through, guys? I could just run. Be you... careful. Oh, well, then... I'll... Andrew's got the key, so... Just, oh. just to stay safe there, you'll need my scent. That mean. Come in, big hug. Hug the old oh, woman. Okay. Hug the old woman. Sure. She gives, she gives <laughs> everyone, if they allow it, a hug. Grin, when you go for the hug, the frame you're hugging doesn't feel right. Yeah. <laughs> she should she should be like a warm, cuddly old woman, but it's bony and tall. And she's not tall. So essentially, hugging her waist, it feels like a waist when it should be like the shoulders. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, uh, she's only... The, the version you're feeling is only three feet taller than you. Okay. A very similar height to another elderly woman you've been acquainted with. Mm -hmm. Baba Yaga. <laughs> All right. That's me. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> Gets up. Uh, Rin, are you all right? No. Ah. Okay. Yes. Yep. Yep. Everything is good. Everything is super good. And then right? uh, the matron will look down towards Hopper and hold out her arms for a hug. I think Hopper, weighing the pros and cons of possibly not having this woman sent on him, goes in for a slightly hesitant hug. Yep. Doesn't feel like a nice, comforting, grandmotherly hug. It feels like you're hugging someone that's, like, rail thin and lanky and tall. Much, much taller. Uh, once I've had that separation, yeah, I didn't do a heart sense. Okay. Would have, but, uh, I, I should have. Um, but once I've got some separation, I'm gonna do a divine sense. Okay. Uh, any celestial fiend undead, or I guess fae, since that's also within the hollow spell? Uh, fae. Okay. Good luck, new and old friends. I'm sure we'll definitely see each other again. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Alright, let's go. And then she looks towards Torture for a second. 
Well, do you want to get you want to get some of my sweet sweet hugs? Of course. Okay. And she gives Tordra a big hug, and it just feels ass like, out. yeah, ass just out. ass out hug. Yeah, it just feels like this bony, <laughs> this bony like elderly woman is just squeezing you as tight as she can. And then, she, all right, leave my necks alone, lady. I don't then, want any of your hard candy. And then she looks, I said I don't want any hard candies. <laughs> oh, who is this handsome little boy? And she's looking down at Hilda's Vini, and she starts petting Hilda's Vini. I just got to ask. Keeps the hands off the merchandise. You just got to ask. <laughs> I want to, did how did Hilzvini actually react? Uh, he seems content, like he trusts her quite a lot, and he doesn't know why. He looks confused. Sorry, I didn't mean to yell at you. I just he likes to bite. If you don't. Oh, that's all right. Okay. Looks towards Vonkar. <gasps> now you're very handsome, aren't you? Oh. Are you married? <laughs> uh, no. <sighs> oh. Well, then. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon. Yeah. And then looks towards Antir. Some of you, perhaps. Yeah. Have that effect on people. And then she just waves like, like that, fingers bent down. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Grin goes and locks the door. Oh. <laughs> Hi. Oh. <laughs> gonna gonna head out. Yes. Going to leave. Uh, as you're leaving, uh, there's like a bird in a cage, and it just goes. Rawr. Good luck. And it kind of looks you. like a, it looks like someone spliced a sparrow within, with like a, it's like a bald, little tiny bald sparrow covered in quills instead of feathers. Oh. It's a familiar Ooh. looking bird to Antir and Hopper, but it's like, it looks like it's a hatchling and not like a full grown bird, mm. like the one you saw before. This one's like tiny. Yep. All right. Okay. Good luck. Need it. Then you all leave the alchemist shop. So we all yes, agree yes. that was anti-gosal, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. Oh, was it? Hilda Sveni says. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the familiar, the tall, lanky body underneath the hidden garments. Creepy drinks and the... Wouldn't we have heard her special voice? Cause we've got all the dust on our face. I mean, if she was in originally speaking in a different language, it could have changed her pitch or accent, or or she could have just been speaking in common to us. Yeah. You also feel like you're being watched. You can see she's like pressed up against one of the windows, just looking out at you guys. Oh, right, let's get Mervon! <laughs> this reminds me so much of like that movie, The Visit, which was a yep. really terrible movie, but this is 100% what the vibe is. Yeah, it's a weird, yeah, it's a, it's gonna, a weird movie. Andrew's gonna begin following Grin to go deeper into this board. Okay. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. like it's the M Night Shyamalan movie where like the grandparents twist. Spoilers: the grandparents aren't their grandparents that they're staying with, and they murder their grandparents, and then. But the mob just drops it off at the fucking her parents' house, but don't say anything because they don't talk to each other anymore. But she drops her kid off, and her she kids. And she'd be like, "Oh, those aren't my grand." There yeah, was so many plot it's, it's, holes. It's, anyway, anyways, anyway. nobody plot anyway. holes. And a kid gets a di like a shitty diaper rubbed on his face. It's, anyways, um. But there is some yeah. scary scenes with an old lady like running around and crawling around. Anyways, vile, terrible. You're all you all leave the alchemist shop as this as the matron just kind of presses her face against the glass and just stares as you all walk away. <laughs> That's not terrifying at all. Shh. <laughs> 
<laughs> a reminder, we're are we in the same city yeah. pre destruction? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's the a couple war of days is going before. on. Yeah, Dalen right. said Dalen said it's about three days before the yeah. war gets Got here. Got it. Yeah. Okay, okay. I just wanted to make sure. Um Regret is dead, so I can't bamp them out. Okay. Damn, that's a pretty deep statement. <laughs> yeah. Regret just being yeah. dead. I can't just I can't just pull regret out anymore. All right. right. Uh, regret has brought you here, dear child. Yeah. The capital R. All right. Let's go. Okay. So we are going through the ward. As you're moving through this ward, again, it's like a lot of like tall Gothic cathedral like buildings, just like ominous and tall and kind of gray pale stone. And a lot of these elves are moving around. Uh, does it then, feel like any, does it feel like there's the vibe of like impending doom or? Uh, it's in the air a little bit, but people are trying to remain calm and just kind of, they're placing like a lot of like uh, abjuration based sigils everywhere to see if they can, you know, they're doing their best. But yeah, there's like okay. a there's a feeling of like people know that something's coming. It's like a look over your shoulder, but nothing's there. Okay. Yeah, and the city is like it slowly it like it flies through the sky as well, so it's never in the same spot. It's constantly moving. Um eventually. Um in the central most that... part of this Oh, what's up? While we were traveling, sorry, like no during I just want to attempt it. Um, and hope for the best. While we are traveling and heading yeah. to the center, um, Antir is going to place a hand on towards your shoulder and is going to begin um, casting. Uh, they want to attempt to scry. So they're going to drop the. Oh. He disappeared from me. He's going to drop the astral cord in front of his face. His hand is going to be grabbing onto Tordor's shoulder. Astral cord is going to be dropped in front of their face. And as they are going to do the incantation, right. they're essentially... Yeah, they bring it down and they just choke Tordor out. Uh, no, they're going to be doing... They're going to be doing... Like, the astral cord is going to kind of weave between their fingers uh, as they begin to create... With the astral cord between their fingers, they're going to create, like, a a line art version of an eye during the casting of the scrying and they're going to peer through that to see if they can scry on Raven Caven Caven Idris if you, if, if you want to remember the name it's Caven it's just he rearranged the letters of Caven to become Vecna the only, yeah the, well, I'm the just only really bad at names it. yeah the only reason I remember it is that it, it's a Caven no it's a cave Caven Oh, Idris. <laughs> oh, Idris Elba. All right. Um, oh, Idris Kavid. Yeah. So you're scrying on... Names. You're scrying on Kavid? Attempting. I'm going to have to lock it. So it's a minus... Oh, gosh. Sorry. Minus uh, 7,000. Uh, so I have a possession or garment, which is minus 4, and I'm familiar with them. So it's a minus 9 on their roll, and I have a 21 DC. All right. Let me, pull up, his, let me pull up his stat block. Okay, wisdom saving throw. So it's a twenty-three minus nine. Okay, so that fails. Definitely fails. Yes. He's got a plus fifteen to wisdom saves. Nice. But that minus nine helps. <laughs> it's a big. <laughs> okay. So he really only so has plus six. You're scrying on Caven Idris. Okay. So and I'm going to try to focus on to see because I know time is weird right now. And so yeah. I'm going to try to focus on like new age or current. Yeah. Like current. Yes. Not you're so you guys are tech. Before. Yeah. Time's really weird right now. Yeah. And as you've been told most multiple times for this campaign or been told by like or discovered is that with the infection of the everlasting arbor, a lot of timelines are kind of like intersecting and different points of time are like intersecting. So you're you're looking inside of this what can only be said is the same fleshy ecosystem slash city slash dungeon you saw the last time you did it uh, but this time he is standing 
uh, on this like raised platform and on the raised platform there's this like mint green colored brain and it's impaled with what looks like barbed pieces of metal that are giving the brain like electric shocks and it's a massive brain it's like roughly the size of a house and it's just being like it looks like it's just being electrocuted and tortured and oh, uh shit. is this the same is this what we and we discovered this didn't we no oh, oh uh, maybe i'm thinking the wrong and oh then, no he was doing the research on the other and human. kind of there's like this position there's like this mechanical system that's like at the center of this whole contraption to, to, to zap this brain and kind of in the center of this contraption like using it with like numerous mechanisms and like controls you see this uh essentially rotting corpse in purple robes with like gold armored accents uh one of his eyes is missing and it's the left eye is missing and it's just like with glowing like a violet color the left hand is missing and it's just like a violet hand made of like violet magic and uh yeah, he seems to be like at the center of this contraption torturing this brain and that's where the scry would end no? and the last time we saw him he was walking through a uh, oh shit he's walking he's still through... yeah oh he is Oh, okay. Um, so, uh, I, uh, uh, let me get my thoughts. <sighs> I successfully scried on Kaven yet again. Um, Anything to update us on? He is, I think he is doing something with a contraption to maybe torture subdue the uh arcane bane the arcane bane brain arcane bane brain bane brain arcane bane brain arcane bane brain <laughs> <laughs> so oh the contraption was like like it's huge the brains yeah the brains the size of a small house and it was just a little bit taller than the brain and built around the brain to like basically just torture it is what it looked like Did it did it uh, so when you it definitely felt like did the contraption feel more mechanical based or did uh, it feel me- a it, bit of like a mixture of mechanical and magical uh okay. give me a um yeah give me one of those give me one give me one of those uh no okay. give me a uh you can do history okay. investigation or perception ooh uh history investigation or perception i'm actually Proficient, all those. Um, wow, look at you. That's wizard. a wizard. <laughs> <laughs> wizard. Uh, that's a twenty-three. <laughs> I rolled a fifteen plus eight. And what skill did you wizard, use? Wizard, dude. I used history. History. Okay. So this is recalling on a memory then. Uh, the design of like the architecture of the contraption and the design is very similar to some of the architecture you saw in the Feywild among the Archfey. So it is an Archfey contraption by design. So Caven Any, did not like, make it. Right. <gasps> Caven also had a spouse though, right? Pardon me? Caven had a elven looking spouse? Uh, it looks like it, uh, but this is very much like Archfey in design, like what you saw in <laughs> Uh, far more okay it, we it's, got the bones it, you know what <laughs> the metal the metal of the contraption is roughly the same kind of metal that was used to make umbral knight armor it's the same kind of uh, okay. color and material and whatnot so yeah my brain is equating the some of the design elements to like those anchors that yeah it's very similar uh, it's very similar I said Keegan that is definitely not his name um what is the fucking architect's <laughs> Castigar. Castigar, thank Castigar. you. Castigar. Yeah, I need like it, an I need it, like an NPC fucking sheet just for those. It's very it's like a very, very yeah, it's very, very similar metal material. Okay. And a lot of their work a lot of his work was uh infusing like metal with organics. Because at the heart of those towers was hearts to power them. 
right. uh, which Grin discovered and destroyed in the one. So this contraption is very much both uh, organic and metallic. I didn't see any other around 10 feet of them. I didn't see anything else. Uh, like no. People. Oh, we, actually, yeah, you probably would have seen uh, those, like, robed individuals that were around the Tree of Hope. Oh, yeah. That got, like, brought back to life when the tree was removed. Uh, yeah. There, there's, a good, there's, like, maybe 20 of them kind of protecting Caven while he's working in this contraption. And that's about it. But they're still very much, like, inside Arcane's Bane, which you learned was, there was, like, a whole, Queen Blistrid designed, like, a whole, like, ecosystem slash dungeon slash city inside the creature. Smart. Okay. Um, yeah, we're going to relay that information. The robed individuals, the architecture felt very, um, what we've been seeing tied to the Fae in some way. Castigar's dead, are they not? Did we, do we know that? If we're back in the past, or if I don't know. But then... I don't know. Yeah. Let's, just, let's just keep going. Yeah, Valestria yeah. said, Valestria told you all that, confirmed that Castigar got killed when Flitz called down the comet in her palace. Yeah. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That was the casualty of the comet. <laughs> Yeah, kill Castigar, and then, yeah. But yeah, that's what you see in the scry. Cool. Yeah. yeah, actually, yeah, the contraption looks a lot like one of the Orbis and Koro, like one of those towers, but this is built around this brain and has, like, these long, like, barred pieces of metal that are, like, sticking into the brain and shocking it occasionally. And Caven seems to be, like, controlling the whole contraption. Are you scrying as if it was a fucking ritual spell? It definitely is not. I was so wrong on that. Oh well. <laughs> By fifth level. It's fine. Okay. Thank you. Yep. I'm just gonna follow suit. Milling over what I what answer saw. Okay. Okay. So if that was our present and it still had you saw the remains of Velestria's attempt to subdue the Arcane's Bay. I think we may be running out of time. Quite literally. I don't think we're going to... I don't think we're going to affect much in our time period until we plant this tree. But the what, the... That was the warning or the, the words of wisdom given to us by the matron. Yeah, the midterm was saying Starfight how we can pick and choose things to maintain from our timeline. Yeah, Potentially. And Vonker, and oh, she mentioned that we'd learn how to do it soon. Yeah, I imagine we are going to pick it up whenever we get to this nursery. Yeah. Maybe. Or even before. The, do we know what it looks like? I mean, we're just kind of heading in this direction to look for it. I'm going to say it kind of matches this vibe. Picks up the hint. So the key. <laughs> key. Yeah. And it, nurseries are typically... Seem, oh, sorry. It seems an important enough building that it will probably be easy to spot. Or at least ask directions for. She did mention that it was in the center of the, the ward, so... You just keep on headed. And a nursery may resemble like a greenhouse. Aren't those typically like big glass buildings and things? It could be. Uh, Professor Arker is like, oh, generally, yes. Uh, greenhouses are made of glass. Floating along on his little mage hand. Ah, <clears throat> oh, thank you. Do you want me to like hold you? I could tuck you underneath my arm or something. Oh, I got him too. Okay. Which is in, is in my inventory. But I can also float around on my own mage hand. It's fine. Yeah, but that requires concentration and stuff, so... Not for me. Anyway. Oh. Whoa. If you do it long enough, it becomes innate, I assume. I uh, should be that close, then, because I use it daily, if not hourly. You do not have enough muscle. <gasps> you know what? I won't take offense to that. Um... 
In the centralmost part of this ward is a massive stained glass dome that catches and refracts the sunlight in a shimmering rainbow-like pattern. Uh, at the front of the dome, directly ahead, is a towering brass gate that has an image of a tree embossed into the metal, and near the roots of this tree is a keyhole. And it's just in the center of this uh, district, and it takes up like eight city blocks. Jeez. Whoa. Central Park. Yeah. yeah, it's essentially Central Park, but encased in this massive stained glass dome. Hmm. Alright, um... So, do we just use the key? Are we all prepared? Are we all ready? Is there anything that we want to do before we enter? Uh, can we do a quick save? Come back to here if things <laughs> go... <laughs> oh, look, a bonfire! Oh, just, let's rest there for a <laughs> All the, all the enemies you've killed respawn. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that, Good that, thing yeah, we haven't silly. killed any enemies. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, they're all in the future. Um, all right. Yeah. Anto will approach the door. Okay. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a, like a 25 foot tall door, but there's like a tiny little keyhole in the root system. Uh, the roots begin to like unfurl and pry the gate open revealing a forest concealed within this massive dome you can see various plants and other vegetation scattered about a simple stone path seems to weave through and fireflies made of colorful metallic substances and crystals fly about the air giving off a myriad of colorful lights and then tending to the nursery are walking living trees that seem to provide the daily duties and upkeep for the forest. Right. Where do we think we need to go? Perhaps look for an empty plot? Torja, you have a thing for trees. Oh, do yeah, like? that's cool. You want to see if you can maybe get a sense of where we need to go? Oh yeah, I'll see you guys in like one minute. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd like to run as fast as I can. Okay. If I could save time in a bottle. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna rush. Okay. Uh, it serves, what's it called? Dash, sorry. Okay. Dash, rush. so 100 uh, feet. Yeah. Six seconds. Uh, so for ten seconds, that's so that's fast. About, so for ten ten turns, that's a um, thousand feet. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> I'd like to go uh, five hundred out and five hundred back, or whatever path. Yeah, yeah. So like thirty seconds and then thirty seconds back. Okay. Uh, and yeah, I'd like to just. Um, take in as much as I can. Okay. Um, try and find out like whatever's uh, going. Um, yeah, interesting. Okay. So as you zip through, you pass by all of these like ents, essentially, that are attend tending to this place. They're like 35 foot tall just walking trees of various types of trees. They look, they just see you kind of scurry by and they go Ooh. Cool. And by the time they finish <laughs> saying hello, you're gone. Um, lots of just. That's related to the great tree that holds the world together. <laughs> you're gonna wonder. <laughs> Gotta go that <laughs> way. You. It's like okay. With your speed, you'd come to this dome. Uh, at the heart of the dome, you find this large patch of dirt that is similar to the dirt, the purple dirt you all collected from the Everlasting Arbor, and it's empty. And it's a large plot of just land. Um, I just want to grab just like, uh, just like a small, like a pinch of it. Like a, okay. Like a, a hand, like a quick Northern. hand. Yep. Zoom back. I got zoom. He puts it on the key. And... Uh, a little bit. Just a quick, just a quick key bump. <laughs> of, Woo! of dirt. Of, purple of, dirt. <laughs> Uh, Torger comes zooming back towards you all at the entrance to the greenhouse thing. Guess what I found? 
<laughs> you found you found dirt. Yeah, taste in it. In a nursery. Taste it. No, I'm not going to eat well, dirt. He, specific, eat he dirt. specifically found the dirt that you found in the Everlasting Arbor, the same kind. It's the Andrew same. doesn't notice that yet. <laughs> it tastes exactly the same. Wait, are you eating dirt just on the regular? Told you we have okay. food. <laughs> trying to, are you trying to piss me off? Is no, I'm not asking a question. No, it's okay. It's, how do you hibernate? I don't. <laughs> okay, so you've never been swallowed by something bigger than you. You don't eat dirt, and then you says you don't hibernate. I am okay. in the weeds. I'll be honest. You are I'm a whole different breed. So in the weed. I'm so deep in the weeds with how you even exist. Because I've seen, you know, I've seen other people's hibernate. You just eat leaves and dirt. And then you don't got to poop for like a month. And you could just sleep. <laughs> you know, I am definitely not going to question your customs of you and your people. It's just how you got to do it. I am not going to eat dirt and leaves to not poop for a month. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> then you's going to have one. You're going to be sleep. We're going to be hibernation walking all the time. What you just going to? I, oh, wait! You going to sleep poop? <laughs> what? No! You know? Oh, you's nasty. You know, elves don't even. Anyway, what did you find? You found Bro. dirt. Ooh! Who says you's going to sleep poop? Ooh! No one says that. You said that I was going oh, to do that. Then what else is going to happen when you try and hibernate? I don't. I don't hibernate. I'm go not going to. I don't need to. Plain and simple. Well, I got dirt. Good. <laughs> Can you show us where the dirt is? Where you retrieved it? Yeah. Please. Yeah. You stop looking at me like that. Open your eyes more. I'm used to that. Mm -mm. Oh, I don't like you squinting at me. That's it's more like just... So unnatural. That's so unconcern. <laughs> that's so concerning for me that your eyes are... So many unused muscles are being <laughs> pushed to the limit. You get a judgment squint. That's all you get. Ugh. Because I don't have it. <laughs> Grinch just looks over and like... You can see one of the ants that, like, patrols this place, or, like, uh, maintains it, is just eating, like, f big old fistfuls of leaves and dirt. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. So you're one of them. You're a tree person. Maybe. That'd be totally cool! Oh well, it's this way. Let's go! This torture leads you all through this nursery. You pass by weird plants you've never seen before. Uh, one of the plants just goes, Hi! As you pass Hello. by. Hey, what's up? How you going? Oh, uh, you know. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> Hopefully you get some good sun today. Oh, I'll be sunning my... Perennials very soon. Mmm. Yep, yep. Nothing like a good perennial sunning. Yep, yep. Never seen one of those before. Our plant. Um. And so, yeah, Torch leads you through. You see, like, a, a massive, like, Venus flytrap eating what looks like an elk. Just like, just chomping that down. There's also wildlife just in here to feed the plants and to keep it like an ecosystem in here. Mm -hmm. As well as these like crystalline metal little fireflies flying around. Eventually though, Torgy leads you to the patch of dirt. And I forgot, surrounding the patch of dirt, because he's so fast nobody saw him. Uh, surrounding the patch of dirt are mossy root covered stone walls complete with ramparts where a collection of elf-like beings made from solid wood patrol. The same kind of, like, wooden elves you saw in the Everlasting Arbor, the same kind. Um, and to help with that, I can also run vertically again. Like absolutely. Run yeah. Um, absolutely. But also, you're just, you're just too fast. 
Uh, one of these, this fuck boy. one of these uh, weird wooden elves kind of halts, looks down at you all, and says, in a language you don't recognize but understand, it says, you may pass through. You have the matron scent upon you. Yeah, we got my girl stuff. Can I ask you something? Yes? Do you think it's like a perfume or is it like a body spray or do you think she's she's like got like a special lotion? What's the deal? How do you get this scent on you? It's her essence. Her divine essence? Mm. Divine? Of course. The Matrix. Yeah. Essence hmm. is a really weird, like, pronunciation of, of old lady sweat. Yeah. Divine essence. It's her divine essence. By Matron Gothel. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, there's your next. There's your next. <laughs> Divine essence. Yeah, I gotta make a perfume bottle for Auntie yeah. The perfume Divine. would be like, it's mm, dirt and mud. Yeah, dirt. And, dirt. and decay. <laughs> um, yeah, the matron of. A little fate, bit of patchouli. Uh, oh, the, the death flower, whatever that. Death yeah, cap. Th that smells like just oh, flesh, rotting yeah, flesh. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there's some of those in here. Um. But yeah, the uh, the wooden like dryad essentially just says uh, it's her the her divine essence. It you know if she trusts you, it radiates off you. You give us a hug, so. No, oh, then she must trust you. Yes, you may pass through then. Do you, do you have water? Does. Like, do you have access to water here? Of course, everywhere. You got water too. Oh, yes, we do. I'm sorry. Every sorry. hour or so, we uh, make it rain. Oh. <laughs> they, just throw, they just throw coins. We hear someone <laughs> pinging the speakers yeah. for the Chippendale show later tonight. Um, hey, guys. Hey, guys. Yeah. Cool. As we move past the garden. Yeah, and now, then you would just be standing in like the big old purple dirt pile. Yeah. Guys, um, last time we took the tree out, there was just a bunch of weird stuff going on. What the... It seemed kind of dangerous. Are we just planning on doing that again? Did we take it? We took it out. We showed the guy that we... took us to go through. Oh, that's right. And when we pulled it out, it was like... Shit, I can't remember exactly because it was like... Yeah, it was like, it was like timey-wimey shit. Yeah. It was like glitching it, almost. It's yeah. Catalytic. I mean, it, I just, it was just like act, it, was, it was just like acting weird and like glitching. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't know where to. Like, are we in the wrong time to do this? What are we? I don't feel as though we are. Do we I need think... to hibernate? Perhaps if we look for a storage shed of some kind, we can find the original sapling. The original sapling. You were to you know would know the original sapling wouldn't here be here at this time. It was in. Uh, okay. it was in the Dol Shadar at the, by this time. Oh, let's. Okay. I think maybe it if we plant this, sapling. yeah, if we plant this sapling now, maybe the idea is, if we get this all done, now it maybe we'll do like a hard reset. Well, maybe it'll shift everything this way. I just don't know what else to do. I mean. I think we're on the right path because we just met with someone who. Well, I'm gonna just do it right now. I mean, yeah, Gopher did say clock's ticking, so. Alright, let's go to it. Um. But the matron looks around. Yeah, every time you say Gothel, uh, people look. That can hear yeah. that are around. Like. Oh, matron. we get like. Matron. Mm. Yeah. Me too. Okay. So who who's who has the sapling? Uh, I think the sapling it's is in with the backpack. Okay. The backpack. Backpacker. I just have the branch. Well, you don't have the branch anymore. 
Oh, that's true. It reconnected. This is happening. Yeah, reattached. Stunk. Well, off we go. See if we can find a spot. You're, is, you're, you're, at, the, right you're, at, you're at You're at the spot right here. See if we can find a barrier. <laughs> okay, so you, as you pull the sapling out, it seems to, like, the jar that it's in, or the container that it's in, I believe it's in, like, a gourd, right? Like a pumpkin tankard? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That pumpkin tankard immediately kind of, like, breaks as the roots begin to, like, like, they break through the tankard, like they're trying to get to the dirt. Don't let it, cut. Don't let it choke me this time. Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> all right, I'm going to start digging a hole using my rabbit-like instincts. Okay. Dig, start digging a burrow for this root system. Sure. The roots begin to, like, reach into the dirt, and the tree, like, plants itself into the dirt. Yeah. Where's that water? I don't know. And he reaches into his, uh, to his backa backa and goes, Water! What does pull it out? Okay, you get the water from the Everlasting Arbor. Ah. And dump it on. Alright. As you sprinkle it with the water, the sapling digs its roots deep and begins to grow in size exponentially and bloom. Basically, it's getting so big so quickly it pushes you all out of out of the way a, a little bit. <laughs> Everything outside of this area where you've planted the sapling seems to slow down to a visible crawl. Like the dryads on the ramparts, all like, like in extreme extreme slow mo. And everything just everything beyond the radius of this tree is just in super slow mo. As the tree continues to grow and grow. A large seam, about ten feet tall and six feet wide, begins to open in the trunk and is filled with flaring, twisting mint green energy as these mint green tendrils, similar to the ley lines, begin to reach out from the tree and bury themselves also into the ground, while two larger tendrils reach out towards you all and float mere inches away, but one of them or so is slightly closer to touching Antir. And the roots I'm are... gonna pull Antir away. Well, if they allow you to. Yeah, I'm gonna try to pull Antir away from this root, so we can all touch it at the same time. <laughs> Shit. Um... <laughs> Jeez. I was looking Just, at like, stuff too. Like yank on their hair. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah, Antir's gonna try to not be pulled away. All right. So Hopper, you're using, loop, yeah. Hopper, you're using athletics, and your athletics or acrobatics. And who's gonna use her freaking luck point on me, on this? I don't have many. I don't need to, maybe. Yeah, that's an uh, eight total. I'm gonna cast silvery barbs on Antir. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm gonna yeah. Gonna so you have that. to beat it. You have to beat an eight. Yeah, you can use athletics or acrobatics. Antir. I will use. I will use a lucky <laughs> point because I lost that by one. Okay. <laughs> There we go. Wow. Twelve. So wow, Hopper, Hopper. Bitch. So Hopper goes to like pull you away from the ten or less, reaching out closer to you, and you sidestep. You don't. Yeah, you just don't get pulled. I. It's like <laughs> as Hopper goes to grab Antir fully. It's Antir knows <laughs> y'all has learned and grown and understands, and Antir feels there might be a slight bit of jealousy. And that jealousy is what stems Antir to just shift out of Hopper's grasp, and it's going to move closer to that tendril. Okay. That it's closer. So to as them. you get closer to it, it does sort of it does like sort of like wrap around your wrist a little bit. Uh huh. And you're thrust back to a memory of you in the Everlasting Arbor, looking into a mirror. Mm hmm. And do you remember what Antir said they saw? I don't know verbatim, but definitely Antir super powerful and connected to all this. I, I can think. help. I can help you out. Please do. Uh, you saw yourself older, mature, and powerful, confident, still wearing the robe you're wearing now, Ogden's robe of the Archmagi, mm -hmm. and you appeared like a conduit for the weave and manipulated yep. and controlled the ley lines. Yep. 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 And very yep. soon, remember that. And you kind of remember seeing that in the. Everlasting Arbor as the one tendril begins to wrap around your wrist and pull you into the tree. When Antir disappears through the little seam in the tree, just whoosh, gone. 
there's a fleeting glance back to the group. Um, and as they're being pulled, the frigid leaning tower bobble enters going, the mantis reach is going to flick to Hopper's direction as they're thrust into the tree. So that bobble is enters memory bobble thing that we got forever ago from Fontaine, I think. What's that Fontaine? Uh, no, it was from one of the Jack Lantern people in... Uh... Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Um... So it's like a leaning tower. And it's... it. I will say, it exemplifies, just so y'all know, it exemplifies Antir's nightmare of growing old and withering away. Hmm. Yeah. And as... Yeah, Antir gets pulled into the tree and then the seam closes. I think huh. Hopper's too distracted by catching this thing that he doesn't quite realize what happened. It's like... All right. Oh shit! Um, Antia. I both saw that coming and did nothing to stop it. Oh sharks! Antia. I mean, I guess we can leave them behind. Antia, your <laughs> this is all because of what you told me. You saw it in the mirror, by the way. Uh, your. Standing on like a corridor, but there's nothing to it. You just see a mint green void all around. But you know, you feel like you're standing on something solid. And the ley lines, you can see the ley lines stretching in all various different directions and uh, rooting themselves back into the fabric of everything. And you're kind of just standing on this like long, long corridor that seems to go on forever, but it's just like mint green flaring light. I don't even know what to do here. This uh, way, child. Follow my voice. No. Alright, Antir will begin. And as you're begin Antir will begin to follow. As you begin to follow, some mint like a little globule of mint green light kind of floats beside you and turns into leak as a child. Well hey there, Antir. Hello, Leek. What are you doing here? I made a choice. What are you doing here? I'm not really here. Oh. I just thought, you know, just chosen to talk to you in this way. Are you to guide me? Yeah, if that's all right. Okay. Do you want your friends in here with you or no? Are you capable of doing that? Of course. But it's up to you. I didn't come this far to betray them or them to feel like I betrayed them. Alright, yeah. well. Just know they will learn what you did in here. That's fine. Alrighty. I'm okay with it. Um, okay, give me a second. And he like, as he like used to do when he would like focus on casting a spell, he'd like strain. And as this visage of leak inside where you are begins to strain, everybody on the outside of the tree sees that seam open once again. Oh boy. And you can hear a few minutes, you can hear the voice of leak calling from inside the tree. Hey y'all, uh, Antir would like you to join them for this journey. You don't have to come if you don't want to. It's open invitation. Wow, well, we're still a party. All right, well, we just start walking. We'll be waiting, looking at everyone else. Von Car. All right, let's, let's party together. Uh, Doe's uh, like, yeah. Doe will be, yeah, they were there for me. So Doe's gonna step through. Uh -huh. Hopper's gonna pot, tuck away the little tower model for later, um, and follow everyone in. Okay, Flitz. Uh. Oh, I don't. In some to... world, I feel like you're a part of me, Flitz. <laughs> Flitz joins. All right. So as you all step into this, into the tree, the bark closes shut again behind you, and up ahead, about maybe twenty feet or so, you can see Antir standing beside Child Leak, Child Version Leak. Oh, hey y'all! Long time no see. Oh. 
Is it okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a guide and ant here somewhere. Okay. I'm going to be... Before we go any further, I want to disclose some things. There will be something revealed that I've been told. I will let you see it or experience or whatever it may be yourselves before me telling you. Okay. Second. There had been a lot of discussions about the potential outcome of who or what may come to possess the weave or control the ley lines, I'm sorry. Maybe it had a little bit to do with my ego, but if it, I feel like anybody, one of us could have done it. Not saying that it should have been me or has, has to be me, but I'm willing to take on that burden for us. More will be more will be explained the further we go along the road. But that's just what I want. So you know now, all of you understand why I did and I chose to enter the tree and alone at first. I know it may yeah, not okay. seem like much or, or true, but uh, after the, all that shit with the. Uh, creepy version of me and seeing myself as the thing within that tower it slowly dawned on me that maybe maybe I could do something better if I try to do better so Carl. what you will see may change your minds yeah oh it will this way everyone right and Leek just yeah. begins to walk into the void yeah Grin's just, just thinking to him thinking to himself like Okay. Uh, Ant here. They actually fundamentally changing, or are they just get be getting better at masking it and talking to us about it? <laughs> you know? <laughs> Don't know. <laughs> like, it's just like, he's just getting better at, or they're just getting better at kind of knowing what we want to hear. As Leek leads you through this place, this weird place that doesn't exist you're just like you feel like you're inside the weave right now or the central like the the heart of everything this feels like this kind of feels like a, like a nexus but of like realities kind of thing and as lake leads you along you're walking through the city of you kind of come into the city of embers and people are living their lives running around happy repairing the the damage from when Eleanor, when he was possessed and he attacked with all the Umbral Knights, they're repairing that, they're dealing with things. And you weave through the streets and people are just, you know, smiling, laughing, having fun, kids playing in the streets, people doing their daily errands. And Leek's like, Whoa, what's that? It kind of points up into the sky and you can see this, like, bird up in the clouds. And it begins to fly down, and you can see Endylus with uh, Acrid tied off to their foot. And you see Endylus go down through a sewer grate. And you keep walking. Like, guiding you through the city. And then there's an explosion. And the entire city is leveled in this massive explosion of purple light and flame mere seconds after Endylus went down into the sewer grate and now you're all standing at the edge of a crater looking down into the crater that you all entered from to get to this place and Leek's like well well 
There's the so hand. that's how that happened. Hold on, don't you? Uh huh. What makes you think you're the right person for the job? If you make decisions like this. Well. The choice to do this was based off of a fundamental need to ensure that the worst enemy that we could face was destroyed. Or what I assumed to be the worst enemy at that time. Don't get it wrong, but what's going to happen to you is punishment. Looking towards the anterior. This way, and everyone. Look, and Leek just keeps walking. Punishment I deserve. And yeah, Leek just walks back into like this wispy green light. Alright. I guess we'll see what else we need to see. You follow and you can see Antir sitting under the skeleton of a dragon in the desert. Just outside of the war camp. You can see the war camp in the distance. And Antir is just confessing just to a raven that's kind of perched on this skeleton Nantir's just confessing and speaking to this raven and oddly the raven kind of looks a lot like the familiar regret but you don't what you see Antir you see something you don't remember in this whole Exchange. You see, you all see. The uh, after Antir is done confessing and goes into their trance, the Raven flies off, disappears, and a figure in a cloak of shadowy feathers and a bone-like Raven mask, the same entity you saw briefly uh, in Elkomir helping people out. Is that the one that torture has? Yeah, but this guy's not wearing any of those masks, but the people he was helping were wearing masks that Torger has. Okay. You see this individual, about 12 feet tall, Elkamirian in, Elkamirian in build and size, kind of comes out of the darkness of the desert and into the uh, skeleton where Antir is trancing, and they place a little coin in the sand, and they step back into the shadows and disappear. And then that kind of scene fades, and Leek leads you all to this coiled-like knot of uh, roots and ley lines kind of in the center of this whole place. Um, and they kind of open up, and inside you can see there's enough room for a body to be placed. And Leek then disappears, and where Leek was standing is now anti Gothel. Well, well, dearies, you finally made it. Welcome, welcome. Ah! What is all this? Then? This, this is the Nexus of Phage, my domain. Oh! And just. So the man was. Not the same. No. This is my divine domain. Oh, goodness. She just kind of... Still got some right. of your divine essence of us. <laughs> oh, I'm... Right. The material plane, the Feywild. I'm aware. Do you... Do you She's mean like to say that you are... a boomer with three households. Yeah. <laughs> do you mean to say that you are also a celestial? No, far from it. Gods don't have to be just celestial. Um, but, just like the corrupted, stinky wizard Caven ensnared himself within a tree to corrupt things, <gasps> to 
to renew things, someone will have to implant themselves in this tree and be the memory. Oh. <laughs> and it is a lifelong, eternal obligation. Right, uh -oh. so more than lifelong. <laughs> it's like a witch spell gone wrong. For <laughs> ever. So you are volunteering Antier that this is their fate? Should they accept it? Well, as a conduit of something capable of harnessing time itself in their magic, they're the best choice. And also, there's a lot of regret and guilt weighing down on them. For all the death and destruction they caused, the millions of lives they destroyed in their rash decision, I think Restoring life eternally is the perfect punishment. Will... Will I be able to... I don't know, keep an eye on them? Or watch you, them you see them? Will, <sighs> you will be similar to what I do. I'm <laughs> just imagining Ant here. Just kind of stuck in one place, and all he all he has are like channels. He he gets to turn to. It's like exclusive you're, cable. You're right? essentially <laughs> you're essentially uh, spoilers. You're essentially Loki at the end of season two. If anyone's seen it, uh, mm. oh, you're but just. I'll shake my head like oh yeah. Oh, oops. Well, Damn. I'm 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 so sorry. Not affect me. Um, but yeah, she, uh. Clock ran out on me on that one. You're good. Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> if you wait, so you just need to sit in the cradle. All right. Okay. But you don't have to if you don't want to. It's up to your friends to decide if they want to keep you around after what you did. Mass genocide. Ooh. But keep in mind, none of them are capable of harnessing time like you did you are so the restoration efforts would be nowhere near as successful Andrew's gonna give a knowing look toward Hopper Charles <laughs> Hopper's, Hopper's, not re Hopper's not making eye contact with Andrew right now I wish I was more wise as to what a better look better redeem Andrew would be it's maybe it's making faces victims. They looked into one of the mirrors in the everlasting arbor and they created a fixed point in time. And it's in a weird way. <clears throat> oh, uh, this is kind of what I've what I've wanted. <laughs> as, as messed up as that may sound. I made a very, very bad choice. I hid it from all of you. I knew that some of you eventually would see through. I am okay with this. Yeah, I mean, this is a bit weird, you know? I know someone who likes the idea of justice that's almost like someone who wants to commit suicide kill someone so that other people can kill him instead as punishment well i'm not going to be dead i'll potentially have the ability or hopefully have the ability to fix everything that I potentially blundered. Here's my question. Did you know that you would kill all the people in the city? I had an understanding that there were going to be residual side effects from what I did. I understand what I was sending down there and what was surrounding this individual. Yeah, yes. you're going to have to give me your paw for a bit. Now repeat the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I understood that there were going to be potential devastating effects 
with the choice that I made. I knew what I was sending down there and what was going to be down there with it. Did I fully grasp the ramifications? No, I did not. Breaking a continent was not what I thought would happen. That was based on my own ignorance. Because the flickering looked to Hopper. I... But I knew there were going to potentially be bad things that happen. So when I do a heart sense, I imagine I'm getting what? Sincerity? Yeah, there's there's sincerity, there's a lot of guilt, a lot of regret, a lot of acceptance to if this is it, this is it. But I, I think a lot of it, a big portion comes from, is also stemming from, like, I don't know what to call the feeling, but when someone's disappointed in you, whatever that feeling is that you feel when someone's disappointing at you. Shame? I guess shame, but, like, not as, like, I don't know. Shame just felt too... Eh. But yeah. imagine that, like, that feeling of, like, five of your parents. <laughs> having five parents who <laughs> are disappointed in you all at the same time. <laughs> and that's what that's what you get. Uh, that's what you feel uh, a lot. Yeah, it's. Yeah, OK. Um. And he's still true neutral. Like he's shifted back to, back to that. We do There's no saving throw if you're comfortable explaining like, what sure. your alignment may have changed to. Sure, sure, sure. Um, Sixteen. Oh, that might be it. Give me just a moment. Ooh, misses it by one. Seventeen what you needed so you beat it or i beat it you beat it wait no you 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 failed i lost yeah. it okay so you you gotta tell um, me your your alignment uh, if it has changed from your evil alignment that it was or what <laughs> i think it has shifted because anter's choice to do it was not an evil intent it was a morally gray understanding that to kill Celestria that there was going to be grave consequences and they chose that but it was not done with an evil intent like other choices that were made in the past so it was more like a uh if she wasn't president killed, or ruler yeah. deciding to take a country to war type of type of decision or president or ruler having the option of you can kill this very bad person but there is going to be big consequences for it and yeah. making that choice yeah. to potentially hopefully divert from war like a war happening yeah. which that's where we were on the verge of going okay Uh, so no, like, uh, like we don't have to use the terms sure, for alignment, sure, sure. but that, huh? What? Oh, I was saying we don't have to use the terms for alignment, but if if you're comfortable using them or have something in mind, it's gravitates to true neutral. Okay. I mean, it's right. It's it's that borderline morally gray understanding good and evil, and understanding the choices that come with making a bad choice or what is potentially viewed as an evil choice can potentially have good outcomes and vice versa yeah. understands as there's a there's an enlightenment that just saying i'm strictly good or i'm strictly evil is detrimental to someone 
exclusively. So having the option of being understanding that every choice will have some kind of repercussion that can be good or bad, no matter what the other choice is. Uh... All right. Which Grin would know is a strong opposition of what Anter mm-hmm. used to be. Yeah. Very selfish. Mm-hmm. Very egocentric. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. You, you'll see Grin, like, sharply take his hand off. Fast prisoner crew. I hope not. Don't get bored in there. I'm just gonna remove their bag, their satchel, on a pouch, like all their shit. Okay. I'm gonna keep the astral cord mm-hmm. and the robe. <laughs> uh, but the staff, they'll just kind of hand to Gothel. Okay. The other things, the items are set down. Okay. Hey, Antia, before you do this, mm-hmm. he needs to reach in to hold his feet, scratch his head. Oh, you, you don't have to ask me, Torture. <laughs> no, but I like to give you love. He goes in and grabs something that I've had in my inventory for a very long time. Uh, and it's a little bit of your hair that fell out one time. <laughs> <laughs> a little, a little it's, it's all together. It's not like a hair doll or anything. Right. <laughs> Which it was. <laughs> a little hair doll. But it's like, it's like peak anterior your hair. And here you go. Just in case you need something to remind you what you, how, how beautiful you used to look. You sure you don't want someone to talk to during when you're here? I mean, that's where I'm here. This seems like a permanent solution. I'd rather <laughs> stay outside. <laughs> um. Oh, don't worry. There won't be much time for conversation and idleness. I just want you to know, Antir. Gotha looks towards you. Once you step inside, there's no coming out. Understand. Interior is going to. Uh, approach Hopper. I want to thank you. I don't know if to look at me or acknowledge me in this moment, but when I saw my decision to bring your family to see you, to have your family there, was selfish initially. But seeing you with your family, as much as your kids or kids, I realized that I made the right choice. For you. I don't want a family. I've never wanted a family. It was part of the reason why I was chosen. But each of you have made a way to be family for me. In every aspect of the word. Though I lived a hundred years with my mother and my father, I, I didn't learn half as many lessons from them as I have y'all. I will miss you all very much. But if it's the penance 
a choice that I made. I have accepted that. And Anto's gonna think back to the dragon bones moment. I don't know what this means for y'all moving forward. But I hope that whatever corruption Haven had initiated, I can undo. Uh, just send us a bit of magic over there on there. How's that? I will try. I will certainly try. Uh, I'm not going to say what Von Cardo would say in this instance, because I didn't anticipate both of them being gone. Um, so they're just going to give you hugs, and then, or Doe will give you hugs. I think Doe would do that. Uh, and then we'll, we can figure out what they might have said when they're both back. Andrew's going to give his book to order their book to order. Spell book? Okay. <laughs> Hilda's Vini is going to pipe up and say, well... Looks like you're getting out of the money, you oh, torger. No, no, no. <laughs> Gonna pull out a coin purse. 29 <laughs> platinum pieces. 15 gold pieces. Doesn't fully cover. But I'm more than halfway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will expect the rest someday. Somehow. Also, wait, would it be really cool if I just cleared it? Is that, is that would be a cool move? No, keep it. Maybe one day in the future we can. I can yeah. pay you back. Okay. 29's platinum. Hmm. It's about 304 gold that you get. <laughs> 305. Yeah. Three, 29 platinum and 305 gold? No, no, no. All together. I owed you 500. I'm paying you 305 gold. With with the platinum and the gold all accounted yeah. for each other. Okay, I'll add that 305. And you're also going to hand the braces dagger to mm -hmm. torture. Okay. Braces dagger. Yeah. That's the yeah. The halfling the guy from the fighting. Yeah. Halfling from the fighting pit. And the funky, the, the funky, funky is gonna is gonna be handed. It's gonna hand it to Von Carr. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they have that. Um, and Andrew's gonna take off the earring and offer it to Grin. Sure. Yeah. Grin will take that. How? The earring it's, message. It's. It's a. Uh, the near cuff. Yeah. Yeah. Would, yeah, Grin will take it. <laughs> it's less of like a. It doesn't go over the. It's not like a the ear cuff that goes. It would be like more along the edge yeah. of the ear. So yeah. yeah. Andrew, yeah. You, a lot of times you probably didn't even notice because Andrew's hair was always mm -hmm. pretty much down. Uh, do I have anything else that I need to actually give away? <laughs> you can't give away the coat because it was in the vision. Yeah, no. Gonna keep the coat, keeping the astral cord because that is a tie to home. Really helping for Ogden's coat. <laughs> Really no. helping. It, got, it was seen in Andrew's vision in the I mirror. So. Yeah, and you can't even. I'm sorry, you can't even. It's a sorcerer, warlock, and wizard. <laughs> whatever. Uh, whatever. I'll multi class again. <laughs> Always. <laughs> um, yeah, that's. I think that's about. I mean, there's a spell component which has a bunch of fucking things, by the way. So I don't know if anybody can use that, but yeah. Uh, Anter is going to give the very last thing. It's a book that they would keep in the they would have moved it from the coat that they hung down mm -hmm. to this one is a kind of a small handheld kind of thing uh, booklet or journal and I was just going to give that to Hopper uh, as you hand it to him uh, Hopper you notice has been like twirling like doing that fidget thing where you just spin an object in your hands 
Mm -hmm. uh, Hodge Hopper's been doing that with the tower model you gave him. And as he takes the booklet, he just says, even the biggest towers fall away with time. Only the greatest ones are remembered. And then he looks up at Antir and looks them in the eye for the first time since learning about the genocide. Uh, and honestly, his eyes are like welling up a little bit. I will remember you. And she's gonna hug Hopper. Okay. Hopper hugs him back. Uh, you know, gonna... maybe oh, maybe if you ever ahead. reach out to Arthur Word Weave again, and you ever get in contact with them, maybe give them my book. It's it's my life. I've written it every night pretty much since I was a child. If we go, if we go mm -hmm. still exist after this. I will try. Not that book. The one that. The one that Hopper has. That book is a lot more special to me, to be honest, told you so. Um <laughs> Or just starts drawing something. <laughs> <laughs> oh you mean this? <laughs> uh so you see that uh, uh Torture is also writing something in his in destroy uh, undestroyable book. He wrote. All right, I, I I wrote something so that it's, you know, so that it's in the chronicles of the history of my people. Antir X is a sassy bitch. And everyone Perfect. will know when they run into you. They can expect sass. <clears throat> All right. That's a little note under it. That is just for me. Okay. Gotha will like eyeing the <laughs> the hole. Gotha will look at uh, Antir and say, "Are you sure you want to do this?" I was so sure of when I first stepped in, and now. <laughs> Yes, I'm sure. She stretches at one of her abnormally long arms towards you. She's gonna take the arm. Okay. Take the hand. And she leads you towards the cradle that begins to open up just this this knot and conduit of roots, writhing mint green colored and uh, ley lines essentially. When you're ready, just step in. Andrew's not going to look back. Okay. He's going to step forward. Okay. As you step in, you all see, everybody else sees the cradle close around Antir. Antir, as you step inside, everything goes white. And you're now in the center of this, like, mint green void that you were traversing, and you're floating there, but all of the ley lines are coming out of you where your veins would be. Arms, legs, just everywhere, outstretched and weaving around you flaring with magic you feel your arcane potential everything that you were your potential your essentially your everything pushing through these ley lines renewing restoring the matron told you to remember and you will succeed remember and you will survive what do you want to remember Oh no. <sighs> a 
essentially, if, you, if, I, if I, so it's not as cryptic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, basically, actually, before the moments actually, that I should probably actually, make. actually, actually, before any of that happens, I should preface this part. Sure. As you're connecting to the weave and becoming the conduit, essentially, Caven became the conduit of corruption. You're becoming the conduit of renewal. You can sense this point of corruption when it happens, when it took place. You basically you're seeing all of time happening right. at once. What will be, what has been, what could be, what can't be. And you're seeing it all for the first time. Like it's these are your threads to weave and uh, cut, if you wish, like Auntie Gotha would cut threads. As you're at the center of fate, time, existence, you do sense that point of corruption when everything kind of veered away from what should have been the best outcome, the true threat. You can sense that point of corruption. Mm -hmm. And it's currently in the time where your friends were last left. And you feel like you could snip that point of corruption with just, with just a thought if you so choose. Echoing the things you've learned that when the ley lines came under threat, the renewal would purge that corruption to make sure that corruption never happened. Um, thinking back, if remembering, and taking every moment and working backwards from the point that they chose to step into yeah. and do this every choice that himself, that they made or the group made that seemed like it could have shifted the balance improperly Antir is going to begin snipping those going so far back to even extend beyond their group back okay. to that point of corruption where Caven and is going to does it feel like if Anti removes that point of corruption that the others would suffer from this choice remember and you will succeed remember and you will survive you get a sense that when you do this what happens next what is to come what will be is what you remember people you remember that you wish okay. to save that may be dead right. events you wish to remember that you wish not to happen the, the grand restoration is here and it is happening in this moment and the restoration is basically for whatever Antir remembers to no oh. hey uh, Lex guess what get out your notes Say everything we've done in the campaign. Yeah. Leave out the bad bits. Leave in the good bits. Yeah. Okay. Reading through. I run through. <laughs> anyway, starting. <laughs> um, so basically, I like, think basically, if like, yeah. if Andrew has a lot of guilt about the city of Embers destroying it. So yeah, all those major events, and if even thinking back, because the player is going to have a hard time thinking of those yeah. moments of that could potentially have diverted negatively but remembering their main thought is of the the five of them okay uh, yeah. uh, that is that it's, a, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a few yeah but the diverting timeline Antir the goal that Antir would like if at all possible, mm -hmm. is to revert all that way, but to allow their meetings to happen in some way. Okay. And Antir is going to remove his memory from them. Outside of each of you feel or would feel slightly obsessed with time. Like, always knowing what time it is just kind of feels right for you. So you're choosing like to, for people, the party to forget Antir? To a degree, yeah. Okay. Like, not because 
Anter believes to protect what is happening and to not it's remove the person who is controlling this shit now and not have any ties to that person in some okay. way Alrighty. Um, except that smidge of each person feels when you know what time it is it feels just feels just perfect maybe it's your like, hand goes to the token that was left to you by <laughs> yeah yep. all right okay this is what eternity is going to look like for ants here now ensuring events transpire the way they should or at least ensuring that in the future no one will manipulate reality time and things ever again to the to such a vast point of well bad essentially and as anterior you begin to like weave these roots together and reform the true thread the rest of you as anterior steps into the uh, the, the 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 thing, the cradle of sorts. Gothel turns to you all and says, "Good luck with what comes next." Yeah, I was hoping that I got good judgment. <laughs> There's a flash of mint green light. Grin, Hopper, Doe, Torger, Vonkar, Flitz. Professor Orkir, you all wake up in a strange room. The walls are like gilded gold. There's boars, like a, in the center of the room, there's like a boar fountain spewing gold, like water. It's a familiar tavern, one you spent a few nights in, the VIP room in the City of Embers. And you wake up there, knowing that the city was destroyed, or... And then, yeah, no memory of Antir is there. So no one remembers Antir, that they even existed. And you all wake up in this room, looking around with the knowledge that the city was destroyed, but now it's back. And also with the knowledge that you were in Elkamir, but now you're not. Yeah. So we did what we went to do, which was we planted the tree and now we're here. Yeah. There was a flash of light when and then that's it. You planted the tree and then there was a flash of light and you ended up here. That's basically what the timeline would be. Okay. Torger opens up his book the last entry it says Antir's a sassy bitch <laughs> I hope that's Torger's voice in this timeline just <laughs> normal <laughs> somehow it was um, Lex Lex I give you an option for the remainder of the campaign you can return sure. you can play as Flitz for the rest of it <laughs> Or you can make a back. You can make another character at the same level as the party. Otherwise, you're playing level twenty Flitz for the rest of the campaign. Up to you. I won't do that to you because Flitz has had the time. <laughs> Flitz is gonna die. Answer with the fit Flitz. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Damn. Um, that's why I. That's why I brought Flitz along. Yeah. Uh, let me have a think about it. Okay. I'm okay. not sure. There, we're gonna be into break soon, so you can think over the break mm -hmm. too. Yeah. Uh, I just don't want you sitting out for the rest of the session. Yeah. Works, 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 um, works. Under underneath, Antir is a sassy bitch. It reads, but but can be nice. <laughs> Aww. Uh, and as you all, what the hell does this mean? As you all <laughs> come to in <laughs> Uzaline's tavern in the city of Embers, that's where we're gonna go to break. All right. Then we'll be back in ten minutes for what the fuck happens now. Yeah. We love you, Antir. We miss and, you. Yeah. Ten minutes. So yeah, you all wake up in the whatever the fuck the name of that inn was. Crystal Palace. You're in the VIP room that you spent a bunch of time in when the, you were in the City of Embers. This is where you would spend the night. Vaughn Cars here. Everybody's here. Yeah, everyone's here. 
But you're waking up in you're waking up in like your own rooms from the VIP place. Um, Hopper's gonna pull out a an electrum plated pocket watch. Mm-hmm. So, you know, like that kind of light blue shaded uh, metal. Yeah. Uh, just look at the time. Um, what time is it? Uh, 4 p.m. gonna wake up um, oh go ahead go, no i was just gonna ramble i'm gonna wake up uh touch the earring of message it's all five charges be like guys we did it <laughs> grin as you move around the world is much bigger than it was a second ago <sighs> You're back, back to my own You're size? back to your normal size. <laughs> Rin, you are small again. Oh, well, oh, we're all... You're all in your own rooms. <clears throat> I, that's why oh. I did the message. Yeah. Gotcha. It, Man, I and so he'll be small. like... Arr! He'll do like a couple laps around the room. And then... Pew! And I'll do the door. We're back, guys! We did it! You all, yeah, as you all kind of converge into the central foyer of the VIP room, you can see Grin is back to being like 12 inches tall or whatever, or 6 inches tall or whatever. Let me see. I wrote down. Uh, oh, it, yeah, it was. Hmm, I think it was. I don't remember anymore, but yeah. <laughs> He's back this down. He's pretty come small. Just let's come out of what was Antir's room in, the, in a previous timeline. Yes. <clears throat> okay. So. For the for the ease of things, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's yeah. Never mind. Mm -hmm. It's whatever. Yeah, so yeah. it just comes out of the entrance room. Grin, you are small again. Yep. Congratulations. Yeah. Okay, we like small grin. All right, excellent. Like small grin. <laughs> you. And I'm just gonna like <laughs> applaud grin and tuck my pocket watch away. You. <laughs> he just like does a couple laps up at the ceiling. Professor Orkir is also here. He's waking up. Oh, that was interesting. Well, we're not in... Oh! Huh. Never planned the trade, did it? That was easy. Shouldn't this yes, have uh, fixed things or something? It seems like we are lacking, you know, a uh, sense of sacrifice. Nah. You know, if it is something this big, we would have had to sacrifice something or someone. To no, there wouldn't. There wouldn't be any feeling. Of, there wouldn't be any feeling of that. No. No. <laughs> he said, "I'm gonna try to dig to that." <laughs> no. No what? sense. No sense of sacrifice no. or anything. It just we still you, you plant on the tree and it happens. Yeah. So we fix no, yeah. things. Uh, Ho no, Hopper is saying like, I feel like there's a sense of some like sacrifice that's missing. Like we should be feeling like we sacrificed something, but we didn't. And we're oh, not okay. feeling that. Like it was too yeah. easy. Yeah, yeah. Like it was too yeah, easy. Oh, my apologies. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Exactly. <laughs> but heavily implied. There are a lot of negatives <laughs> in that statement. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I'm a bit concerned. Uh, do you think we need to... What now? I mean, we did that. We did the tree thing. We walk the world on right rocks. I mean... <laughs> Perhaps Arcane's Bane is still free? We, we could figure out. I mean, the city is back. It could be trapped underneath the city of Embers again. Or, no, it was uh, Von trapped. Vonkar will. Uh, uh, would Vonkar. Yeah, Vonkar. He's an old man. Um, curious. Do you remember the library in this city? If things reset. Do you think the history books may have changed? That might be a good place to start. Oh. oh, wait. Do you think I'm still... Might the headmaster still? I think we really need to do this. Why can't we just go out and see if there are any problems that we can find? Let's go find some problems! No, we have right. a huge problem. What? That the the arcane Spain are they still? We need to know if that stuff is still okay, right? Yeah. For, for, how how we do that? Can you spell? Quite a good point. 
Um, can I? I, I will double check. Mm, no, I can't. Well, we can ask someone to scry for us. Can Doe scry? Don't think I can. No. No, damn. Can Anter attempt something? Or, oh my god, I'm not gonna get used to this. Can Flitz <laughs> oh, attempt no. something? Yeah, what's Flitz, um, what's, Flitz, what's Flitz trying to do? They have their, they have their, their uh, gnarly fucking uh, friendship bracelet. Friendship yeah, the necklace. necklace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, did Can you? They try so, in, with when I was controlling Flitz, I did change their warlock subclass. You don't have to if you mm -hmm. don't want to, but I changed theirs. I did. Oh, okay, cool. Never mind. Oh yeah, yeah. That was the intention. Once the the whole exchange Perfect. with the genie and yeah. Um, can they attempt to contact? Grinning Maw, uh, the, the Gnashing Maw, what is the this? Grinning Skinner. Grinning Skinner. Well, no, because I remember Flitz knew him by something else. The Arch Maw, of the, poem. the Great, the great the Gob. The Arch Maw, Grave Gob, Great Gob, maybe. Maybe that Gob. one. Yeah. 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 Going to try to contact them through the through the necklace. Okay. What do you say? Uh, and if I recall, every time you use it, something happens. I can't remember. My toenail oh. increases. My toenail grows longer. That's right. <laughs> I don't know why that is a visceral. That you remember. Why that is a visceral memory, but it I still has the item. Probably still has the item on their character sheet. So they do. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, it uses the contact other plane spell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, great gob. Um, are you there? Are you alive? Are you a stone? Are you? Are you okay? You all you receive from the other end is just the sound of a fart and then laughter and then that's it. Okay. okay. You don't want to talk, I understand. Well, Grin, you're happy to know that your papa is is alive and well. Oh god. So the, so things were shifted and fixed, so I think Do you think that our, we're still gonna be cut off from the fall? Oh, it's very valid. That's, you I see Hopper's know. ears like droop a little bit. <clears throat> I can, I can. Oh, no, I don't. I don't let have any of those spells. There is only one way to find out. Yeah, do we know of a convergence somewhere? Like where the natural, where it's weak, like a veil between the fair world and the material. I know those exist. I've heard of them. You know the closest one was Heart Rock Grove, where Auntie Gothel lived. Or lives. Um, oh, which, there is one, which means... There was one when I was traveling to the city. Uh, initially, we... I, um... Oh. When I was... When I met Auntie Gothel, uh, she sent me through a portal oh. to do a mission for her. We could try her hut in Heartworth Grove. I get it. I was like, uh, you're missing some details there. I'm like, oh wait, no, never mind. Yeah, I was, I was no, like, I'm what? Not. <laughs> Consequences that of my own actions. <laughs> I Which, I don't know how Hopper would have gotten out of that fucking tree. Because <laughs> 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 I had to hold 100%. <laughs> Um, Andy Gotho got me out. It's that fine. is true. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I can. I, I have a. Uh, I can see if I could. Um, I see. I can see if I can uh, shift us through the plains to try to go to the Feywild again. You think that would work? Would that be dangerous? No. No. It I've, depends I've on where before. you enter the Feywild. If we're in all it, honesty. And if things are still kind of rough there, like what happens if? We're not permitted entry, and we kind of get like, you know, bumped I around. I did sort of uh, this. Uh, I did sort of exile myself from the silly court. Yeah. One. So. You know. It may not be the best no. idea to figure out now. Yeah, maybe this is maybe it's not like the best thing to just do. Maybe if we need to do it. Yeah, I agree. It takes us there naturally, and 
So, we're here. This is, it's almost like a new, a new world for us, right? New but same. So not new. I'm excited to see what's different. Me too. Should we start? A couple of places I want, places I want to visit. The library. The Lay Guardian Tower. And Lay Guardian Tower is in a Lay Guardian Tower is on another continent. Kenna was just no, borrow, the... was Kenna was borrowing a establishment here in the city. Okay, that's what I was referencing. Oh, okay. It was the tower that they were operating out of in the city. Okay. All right, you guys All go right. there, and I'm gonna check the taverns and the bars and the the, the bounty boards. I'm gonna see if there's any problems I need fixing. Here. Sounds like you have the greatest idea. I yeah. trust you explicitly because of who you're bound to. <laughs> Please don't look at me like that. Thank you. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> okay. And he All does right. like that that top head hinge the... thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I kind of preferred you taller. <laughs> He was strangely, strangely less intimidating when he was taller. That was less real. Oh right. shit. Right. I, so have to, I have to recover a very old copy. <laughs> Undestroyed copy. Of my NPC notes. Restore this oh, version. Okay. There. Oh, nice. Oh, no. Did Perfect. you some NPCs? Yeah, because that yeah. they all got the killed. The place exploded. Yeah. Dead or they were dead. In the so you, as you all like step out of your private room, you go downstairs into the the inn, the uh, Crystal Palace Inn. You can see Uzali and the uh, plasmoid, the ooze folk, essentially behind the counter working. Oh, hey, y'all. Uzlan. Hello. Welcome back. I mean, uh, good to see you. Welcome back as well. You. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you remember how we got in here? Yeah, you all sort of stumbled in here last night, looking pretty tired. Do you know what day it is? Yeah, it's uh, it's the fourteenth of Traband. The day you all went to Elkamir. Oh. Oh, so it's still, it's as if that it just didn't happen, but time had kept going forward. Yeah. Okay. And at 4 p.m. was the time that you all planted the tree. Mm -hmm. So you're waking up at 4 p.m. to everybody else. Yeah. Must have been a, must have been a, you all must have had a busy night. Oof. The day's almost over. Say that? Oof. The best time to go tavern crawling. I agree. Well, you know, have fun. Thank you. Um, I think I'm gonna go to the library. Yeah, me too. Yeah, me too. Just to get some context, possibly. Uh, I will go to the tower where the lay guardians were operating out of see if they still exist oh i'll go visit there and then we can check out all the other stuff the taverns and the and the the bounties see if anybody got problems very well bon journey Right, you all kind of go your own separate ways in the city. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I need to pull up the map of that city again because it has all. I know what's. Ah, fuck it. Um, no, I'm. Oh, yeah, no. The library. We're walking was, the same way, right? Yeah. <clears throat> For a little bit. Yeah, 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 mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll Are we going to yeah. the Brightstone yeah. Institute? So, is it is the Brightstone? No, that's the university. Uh, whatever. I'll figure it out in a sec. Uh, so as you all kind of exit the tavern, uh, next door, as per usual, is Sir Arthur Wardweave's tower. Still there. Intact. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so that's back. And you can see Arthur and uh, Terry outside gardening. As they usually are doing. Hello. Oh. Hi, everybody. And he's not putting on the fake posh accent. He's like, Welcome back. Heard you guys had a rough night. Yeah. I heard you had a rough girl, too. Yeah, it was weird. You know. How'd you get back? Terry and I must have drank a lot of alcohol. The Fae brewed some powerful stuff, I'll tell you that, and that Aelinor fellow had to drop us off back here, because we, <laughs> we couldn't handle it. Aelinor picked Aelinor. you up from the Feywild and well, he, put you here well, recently? And he brought us home, uh, like, a week, uh, yesterday? Last night? Something like that. Was that in the Feywild's open? I don't know. Seems like it could be. At least the court of stories is. No, that was the uh, court of fables. Myth Harbor, court of fables. Is that separate from the Sealy Court or like a minor court in the Sealy? They're part. They're they're allied with the Sealy Court, but they're not in the Sealy Court. Okay, so they're their own. Okay, so perhaps the court of stories. Is... Court of Fables is open still, and it's just the Sealy Court that is closed its borders. What do you mean? The borders. Uh, it's a... Borders were never closed. Are they? The borders were never closed. You you guys knew that. Have a good day, guys. Have a good day. Yeah, have a good day, guys. And they go back to their, doing their gardening. Is green? That's one thing. That's changed. She gets to your kids on that. It's like little. <laughs> oh, wait, no. Hopper has little paws. I was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so you make your way towards the. the I can go home. So. Where the. So, yeah, as you're all walking in that direction, because it wasn't the same direction. The tower where the Lay Guardians had set up briefly. Yeah, you find it. It's there. Yeah, the Brightstone Institute. They were set up in the university. Mm -hmm. So you, you get to the university grounds and you just see like students and faculty wandering around. There's, there it looks like there's like an important individual just kind of like making sure everyone's doing not bad things on school grounds. Mm -hmm. They're like a tall, like, uh, they're like a very lithe pot-bellied, though, bugbear in, like, turquoise-colored, not turquoise-colored, crimson-colored robes, and they have little beady green eyes, and they're wearing, like, massive glasses. And they're just, like, overseeing everything. Uh, pardon, professor? Oh, yeah! <laughs> um, are the lay guardians still taking up residence? Who? The Lay Guardians? They Is never they, were... they never were. And also never heard of them before. Hmm. Uh, thank you for no. your time. No problem. I'll let you get back to it. No running Yelling to like one of the kid who's like running with like Nye. A knife. <laughs> Grin at the same time was winding up to go. <laughs> <laughs> Rin? <laughs> Save it for the streets. <laughs> is fly he's like flying, but he's like walking while doing so. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the person mentioned the Lay Guardians never heard of them and mm -hmm. such an organization that he never heard of doesn't, was never here. Doesn't seem doesn't seem to have existed at this timeline. Interesting. All right. Lots of stuff. Interest. I mean, it, it's a good thing. That probably means that the ley lines are not corrupt. It does not. There is no guardians to purify them or 
prevent other people from getting too attached. Yeah, yeah. Is that this a good thing? You see think Professor Orc here, who has vast knowledge of the ALD or the Elder Trees, he goes, Kind of floats around, looking confused. Like the little pinpricks of light kind of narrow a little bit. Hmm. What you got there, Orc here, Professor? I have vast knowledge of the Elder Trees, the Eldir, but I can't seem to recall any of it. What could that mean? I don't know. Oh. He looks. You know what that means? He sees like. And also, as you're all standing in this in the city walking, you do see Alchemurians also walking around. Like the twelve foot tall bald elves. <laughs> they just look like they just look like they're part of the population now. And people just don't seem caught off by it. Just you you all remember But yeah, they're all here walking around and stuff. Alchemurians have like now joined the playable lineages in this setting. Oh goodness. Hey, Professor. Yeah, sorry. Maybe you got a lot of extra space or bandwidth. Maybe the library is where you need to go. Uh, Fill that up or something. Yeah, it might be a good idea, actually. Yeah. Weird. Well. Yeah. And we're going to rely on you as our little mobile library. Alright. True. If the Alchemyrians are among the general population, what happened to the gods as we knew them? Huh? The reason the Alchemyrians went extinct was because they lost the final battle in the Calamity. No, that's not the right word. Nope. <laughs> no. War, War of Ascension. The War of Ascent, but also, because they lost... a lot of them were frozen in stasis when that you saw. Mm -hmm. But a lot of them also died. Yeah. It's because they lost in the final battle for the War of Ascension. Yeah. So what happened to Arf Mathnin and the others? I'm not in the big rush to find out. Uh, maybe maybe those names don't even mean anything anymore, you know. Uh, you see, Professor Orkir is like trying to like figure things out, and he sees one of these Alchemyrians walking past, and he kind of flies, floats over on his mage hand. Oh, excuse me, so sorry. <laughs> oh, hello. Uh, what news do you have of the Everlasting Arbor or the Tree of Hope? And the Alchemyrian looks at him like he's speaking gibberish, essentially. <laughs> Sorry, never heard of those words before. Are you guys like, are you guys like playing a game or something? Yes, uh, we got you. Ha ha ha, here's a gold. He just goes, I'm not buying what you're selling, man. <laughs> Get the hell away. He's like, oh, you guys are funny. Now. You guys are funny with your made up words. All right. And the first work here kind of floats back all confused. Uh, Library, maybe. Yeah, I think, I think we definitely need to go there. You definitely... Are there any other places that you were looking to check? You, you two, Hopper and uh, Grin. There's some you know bounty boards. If, if you want to, if you want to recall locations that were in the city before Antir nuked it, uh, the Crystal Palace Inn. You know, and also this means Fontaine's back. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, Antir <laughs> rewrites his. Oh, you don't Fontaine. bring back Fontaine. <laughs> oh. uh, so there's the Crystal Palace Inn. There's the Curious, Curious, Curios, and Curiouser. Where you got the funky, uh, the Grimsteel Armory, Hardy's hats and headgear, Harlow stables, Penny whistles, Pashan's potions, the Quillen Tome, which was like the magic shop. Uh, I assume the Cathedia mines don't exist anymore. Who knows? Cathedia who? But yeah, and then then yeah, the Bright State, Bright State Institute, which you're near, which you're at right now actually, and then the library is close to there, like a block away, so. Yeah, I mean, might as well just stick together. I'll find something to do in the library, I guess. You seem very eager to do, uh, to do, to do things, Grin. You have a lot of energy. I feel like doing stuff! I 
think it was because he got shrunk down to his normal size again. <laughs> that would make sense, yes. So many galleries with nowhere to go. It's true. <laughs> oh, I found it. Found what I needed. Found what I needed. I just what I needed. <laughs> Alrighty. Cool beans. Yeah, so you're currently at the Brightstone Institute. The library, which is the next block over, is Idol Idolan's Labyrinth. Yeah, that's right. Cool. Sure. And Goad's Tower is, I think, where... Yeah, and then there's Goad's Tower, which is still here. Actually, no, it's not! But that was never visited <laughs> by you guys, so it's not really much consequence. All right, cool beans. <laughs> So you start making your way towards the library. And it's the same building as before. It's like a crystalline building. Err, no. That's right. Yeah, you all would have remembered the City of Embers was made of crystals before. And it is now the similar, similar architecture as the Alchemirians did in Alchemir. Very similar architecture. The crystal buildings are gone. I should have specified that. And the crystal buildings were made of uh, defunct Cathadium. So, yeah. There we go. So this is now that, like, gothic era? Yeah, it's like... Style. It's it's how Alchemir looked. Like, exactly the same uh, architecture. But the same buildings are owned by the same people. Uh, from the city of Embers. So there's that. That would have been, like, a brief, like, wait, what? It's an alternate universe Portugal. Essentially. Uh, but you make your way to the library, and as you all enter, you see the recently divorced gnome character run over. I can't remember his name right now. But he runs over. Oh, it's you guys! Welcome back! So, it's been rough going for me, but I'm so glad to see friendly faces again. Uh, the divorce proceedings have been pretty, pretty rough. Oh, that's rough, Freddy. But I'm pushing through. Oh, that's unfortunate. Poor thank thing. you, thank you, thank you. If so you need much. to talk about it, I'm I'm a very good listener. Oh, you're so nice. Huh. I know. Uh, anyways, uh, sorry. Uh, what, what what can I do for you, Paul? You looking for anything specific? History books. Like, lot, all your history books. I can make it easier for you. Top floor, take okay. a left, and it's the, where we have most of our history historical texts. Oh, are the how are the arranged? Chronologically? Nope. In no order oh. what's in no order whatsoever. Okay. Oh, no, it's arranged in uh, order of uh, cro uh, uh, year. Well, era first. Oh, okay. Grin's gonna touch that part of his ear where the message mm -hmm. uh, item is as he starts thinking about time and the years and mm -hmm. like chronological <laughs> orders. <laughs> um. Yeah, so he tells he guides you. He'll he'll lead you there with his because that's what they have to do. They have to lead you to the sections, and he leads you to like the historical section at the very top of this library institute, and it's kind of empty because a lot of people probably find history boring, and there's more cool books to read in here. Uh, and you're like, are there any by Arthur Word we've like on display when we enter the library? Yeah, his books that it's you like all... new arrival. No, Those just all just, all, just all of his like previous books that everybody knows about. Okay. okay. But yeah, you get to the historical section, it's completely empty, and the gnome, whose, again, name I forget, uh, is... Well, uh, here you are. If you need anything, don't feel... feel free to... well, don't, don't hesitate, and... Uh... yeah. Huh? If you need anything, don't hesitate. Ask for no, help. No, I mean... What? Any good points. Huh? What do you mean? said it was empty right oh the historical section is empty there's no people in it that's what i meant oh i thought, I thought there were <laughs> no, no, no 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 i was just like what is the <laughs> the no 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 <laughs> sorry it's full it's full it's, it's full of, it's full of books but he's like but i'm empty in terms of there's no people and he's like gotcha. yeah if you need help just uh shout don't hesitate you know well then he kind of walks off and you can see yeah it's all sorted by era the weird part is it goes New Zenith, which is when the War of Ascension happened. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and then it's an, it's an era called post-restoration. New Zenith, post-restoration, there's no other eras. Oh. start towards the end of the new zenith uh in in the era the post restoration era there are no books it's like it's a brand a newly made section hmm. there's no books in it because there hasn't been any written yet it would seem mm-hmm i think uh, i'm oh. gonna pull out a book from the towards the end of the new zenith era okay and try to start reading. It'd be and, uh, a text, most likely. There's a text called "The War of Ascension: The Final Days of the New Zenith." Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm gonna. Here. I'm oh, gonna sorry. pull out my little pocket book uh, that I've obviously had this whole time and is filled with notes <laughs> taken by me and this weird person from before, um, and I'm gonna start writing comparative notes. Um, they, like what I know, and then correlating it to pages in this book of what okay. the new uh, history so has happened. Armathnin was slain during the War of Ascension, and he never ascended to godhood. Is the gist mm -hmm. of it? So anything that yeah. would have happened, yeah. So weird shit. Uh, slain during the War of Ascension before he could have, could have ascended, meaning the Weaver was never uh, banished. Uh, mm -hmm. and yeah, the war just ended one day. Uh, it doesn't say how. It's just like uh, it just says like uh, opinions and thoughts. Okay, theories of yeah. what historians think happened. Yeah. Okay. Hey, professor. Oh yeah. Could you, well, start up all the really old stuff? And just read it off. I would not be physically able to read all of these books in a timely frame. I read just as quickly as you all do. <laughs> Alright. That's how long this gonna take. Days, probably. Perhaps weeks. Think of it as an adventure. Every book is a new discovery. I choose my mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, just grab. We don't have to. I, oh, I don't think we uh, need to read look, all we of them. We should we? look. We should look for books about the Everlasting Arbor and stuff like that. Yes. Oh, maybe there's books on. Probably not. Do you think we have to look in the fantasy section there? No, I think we're actually going to probably have to talk to. Oh, uh, I will say. That in the book that you just read, Hopper, in the mm -hmm. context of it, the War of Ascension ended maybe a decade ago. Whoa! Whoa! The long okay. war. Holy cannoli! Uh, the war was no, the, the war was a hundred. It lasted for a hundred years in this book. So the war was a yeah. hundred years long, or no? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I think so. It was a hundred years long, and then in the context of the way it's written in this book, it ended ten years ago from this date. Current date. Guys, oh. do you know what that means? <laughs> no. That means our last campaign, the replacement bad guy, <laughs> right there. They, they ended oh. the War of Ascension. Wow. Oh, shit! Icons, icons legends. And events. it mentions an adventuring party known as the Faust and the Furious... Stopped our math uh -huh. from ascending and halted the halted the war of ascension. Flitz, you have you do not fucking recall doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Flitz, it wasn't this your party? What's the name? What does it call? What does it refer uh, to us as? The what does Faust it refer to? and the Furious. And then it has it has like a little like drawn and portrait of them all, and you like, see Flitz. This is you, is it not? You see Flitz in, it, in the in the, in the drawing. You? I mean, a little younger, yes, but like. And, and then Flitz, you. Flitz, wow. Flitz, as you read it and you look at this picture, your own personal, like, you remember two different events. You remember going in to kill Ven because he was possessed by Cathosis, and then you remember stopping Armathnin in Elkomir 
during the war with the Faust and the Furious. You have two differing versions of events in your mind. Oh, goodness. And then... That's... You would recall... It's not the first time you've... Oh, yeah. <laughs> not but, the first time But see, had... but that also... That timeline was also erased. So actually, yeah, you wouldn't remember that. Never mind. So many erased... But you do have... Lines. You do have two, like, distinct memories now of... Armathan being defeated in one, but you don't remember actively doing it. And then you have the memory of you all fighting uh, Ven after he killed Armathan. So, but yeah, it says the, the Faust and the Furious stopped the War of Ascension ten years ago, or sorry, six years ago. It would have okay. been six. It would have been six years ago. So the <clears> War of Asc so the New Zenith when the War of Ascension happened, all that happened. That only happened six years ago now instead of two thousand. Okay, so we're. If we look at, like, calendars of today, which we probably wouldn't have been looking at very closely until now, uh, we see is like, we're like year six of the new era, of the uh, post-reconstruction. It would be, it would be six post-restoration, so year six <clears throat> of the post-restoration. Okay. Yeah. Um. Which also means other things happened. Or didn't happen. Hey guys, you know what this means? It's not possible. We get to experience the year 69 again. Wow, that's where your mind went. Uh, probably not. I think Hopper. Some of you might be Shut dead. Shut up, Ant here. Some, some of you might. Some of you might be dead by then. <laughs> In terms of a Vonkar, Vonkar's like, well, I won't get to, but. Wait, what? Do you, what year is it currently? Uh, six. What was it again? six Post restoration. There's a there's year a six? yeah there's a calendar in here and it says years it says six pr. Oh, I don't, I'll experience. I don't it. have okay. the, exa the the exact date would have changed then, but I don't have it right now. I'll have it yeah, next. Yeah, I'll have the date set up next I, session. But yeah, I do not think six is a personal record for anybody, unless it is a mile run. That could be a pr for someone. What? Sure. You know, I, I don't know what records. you meant there, but. Oh. <laughs> oh, I thought you were talking Sylvan for a second. I mean, it is a very common Sylvan practice to keep track of your personal records, yeah. especially okay. in athletic events. Okay, so we. So. Mm, Valkyrie just looks confused trying to figure things out. So. The war of position that happened thousands of years ago never happened, or did, but it happened six years ago, and it ended differently now. And nobody has it, and the Alchemirians who grew the everlasting arbor in the Tree of Hope have no knowledge of such trees existing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Perhaps we did such a good job planting it, it left all memory, yes. and now it is perfectly safe in the annals of history? Guys. I think we did a good job. We did it. Uh, there is a book uh, in that would be in the historical section, but it's kind of like not in the historical section. But it says the pantheon of then and now. Well, let's read that one. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, Joe, would you like to read this one? <laughs> so, the Pantheon of Then and Now, as you begin to peruse through it, uh, it just mentions the. It wouldn't be the, called the Pantheon of Then and Now. It would say, like. I don't know. I'm uh, some... hearing of Ven and Nat. No, <laughs> by Ven too, yeah. It would just be like. A, it's, like a, it's a weird. It's a weird. It's a weird. It's a weird book that just says uh, details of the current Pantheon then. And yeah, whatever. It's si It's written by Ven Kihalis. For fun. Nice. Uh, <laughs> uh, I've been got his book published. So you're, re you're reading through all the book, and uh, the prime deities have changed from what you remember. There's one called the Deep One. Uh, there's the Gold Patron. The Gold Patron existed before. There's the Lady of Webs in the Prime mm -hmm. Pantheon, and it's not... Loth, it's it's described as the neutral good god of or the neutral god of spiders, the sister of the web mind. And in this text, Loth is referred to as the web mind only. Okay. Uh, there's the matron of fate, also known as the lone matriarch. 
is the newly restored goddess of fate and death. Uh, there's the Sorrow Queen, which is a new one. The Stonemaker, which is a new, uh, the old, old one. The Twin Dragon is still considered the, like... Well, there's no longer a... And also in this book, there's no longer a primary deity. They're all equally mm -hmm. worshipped. So there's no, like, overarching deity anymore. Yeah. Uh, the the Twin Dragon is what Bahama and Tiamat were before they split? Yes. That was... Okay. Name. Which happened during the War of Ascension, but that never happened. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. The Weaver is no longer referred to as the Mother of Magic. Mm -hmm. They're just called the Weaver. Mm. And the symbol has changed slightly. The symbol before was a hand, like a blue hand with glowing veins and an eye in the center. Antir, what would the symbol for the Weaver be now? Oh. Hmm. That's a really good point. It would be a leaning, slightly leaning clock tower. Okay. Um, with the with the pendulum, like swinging, like breaking through the 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 edges of the clock tower, like. So it'd be like a mix of like a father clock, tower s, but it'd be slightly askew. Okay. And it'd be a. Uh, it would be a, like a deep blue with the most of the iconography like on the edges and stuff like that would be purple. Okay. Uh, and it's playing into his, and color of his tattoos. You all remember the Weaver being referred to as an Archfey. There is no mention of them being Archfey in this document. And it says they are the god of magic knowledge. Magic and knowledge. And it doesn't mention anything about ley lines or trees. Mm -hmm. uh, there's the uh, I'm going to I'm gonna pull out my leaning tower model. All right, it, it's compare it to. It's not the a. Cl it's not symbol. a clock. It's, it's not a clock tower at all. Yeah. It's just a, it's a little tower. Coincidental symbology. Yep. Gotcha. Uh, there's the winter beasts. They're known about. Then the evil pantheon has been given a different name. It's called the relinquished. So that's new. The one of them is the barbed calamity, the god of pain. Yay! Yay! <laughs> uh, there's the Cold Lord. After the forceful, uh, and it means it says that the Cold Lord is the Lord of the Nine Hells. Ooh. Oh. And is also known as Mephistopheles. Oh. So the Ash Heart never came in. No. Or, no, Mephistopheles took over. So for... something happened. Asmodeus was still doesn't say how, yeah. but Asmodeus was still defeated. But it's, the rightful ascension happened, and Mephistopheles took oh, okay. the throne. How it should gotcha. have happened. Uh, yeah. th another one of the evil gods is called the Depth Tyrant, the evil god of the oceans. The Dreadbringer, the god of terror, the mother of conflagration, also known as the Avenging Fury, the goddess of revenge, the Shadow Worm. A familiar one, because you all saw it in Elkamir. <gasps> oh, we should give it babies! Uh, the Shadow Worm is the god of night and murder. And then the lesser idols that are mentioned are Sylvas, the hedonistic. Vertigrim, the night serpent, and then someone called the Whisperer. And then there's Elkamirian gods, and it looks like that section's being, like, worked on. Okay. But the only god written down in the Alchemyrian gods page is the murder of crows, the god of secrets, confession, guilt, and hidden knowledge. And it shows a their symbol is a shadowy like a shadowy mantle of uh, feathers with a bone like raven visage. And that's it basically. It's just all the new gods, and it mentions that. You know. That's what it. No mention of Armathan because he never became a god. Does Flitz have memory of Flitz has memory of being the headmaster, right? Uh, Flitz was never the headmaster. Flitz was just on the council. Oh. But you still have memories that of that, sense. yeah, yeah, yeah. Would Flitz have? I know you didn't add anything, but would Flitz have anything that would potentially be able that he could be able to? use to contact the academy 
Yeah, yeah. Every like member of every member would have like a means of like doing so, whether it be like a trinket okay. on their person or something. Sure. Um, as we're reading through this shit, it. Let's. Uh, I. Let me check something. Um, uh, Flitz would have a probably tucked underneath uh, their I don't even know what outfit they're wearing right now uh, but kind of like a little uh, brooch uh, would kind of rub it Flitz tumble pots uh, is everybody still okay there you wait a little bit And then you get a response from the headmaster. Yeah, everything's fine. Uh, how are you? Is your mission is your uh, mission going well? You want to do? I think we did it, but I think we could actually use a little bit. Uh, I think we need a little bit more information. I. Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, give me a second. Well, let me. Oh, I'll I'll contact you uh, later. I'm gonna oh. make sure everything's good with the people that I'm with. All right. Well, whenever you're ready, I can open up a doorway for you all. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Uh, you all heard that, right? No, we're out. No, oh. is that what's a private communication? Okay. Um. So I think we might need to. Because there's some people that are missing from, like, you know, but... Okay, a couple things. Uh, the, this Craven individual, right? Or Caven. Caven. I need to know what's going on with them. Yeah. Maybe I could see if there's... I could dig up information of regarding Arcane's Bane. Yeah. Because a um, lot of these things... This, that was... That was... She wouldn't, have had a, she wouldn't have had a reason to create Arcane's Bane, right? I think we might, if, if that's where, where the direction we want to head in, we might need to look up any tools that might help us, like, in that regard. Right, yes. I agree. Something that just struck me regarding certain events that happened because certain you know, bodies of operation existed in a certain timeline. Your friend, uh, Guardian Pashan, could they still be alive in this time? If they are not a play I... guardian, they would not be possibly with Eleanor, and I would possibly not have killed them. I mean, we could just go check in Prashad's potions, right? I mean, if they but, aren't if they aren't a little guardian, they might just be running that shop. That is true. Well, yeah, their uh, stepbrother ran that one, yeah. Yeah. I believe so. I mean, you know. Flitz, do you want to know if one of your friends is dead or alive? Uh, of course. No, yes, so... Uh... Ken and I didn't really stay very close to those years. But no, I'd love to see if Ken is okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so Pashant's Potions is also nearby, so you all leave the library. Yeah. And... Just, we just leave Oak here there. <laughs> the guy doesn't need to sleep <laughs> anyway. Just, you I'm, keep just, reading. Like, oh yeah, I'll stay, I'll, I'll, stay, I'll, uh, I'll stay here and try to figure things out. Uh, strangely, we'll prof us, us, us Professor Orbs are only made with knowledge of certain subjects, so I will do my best to learn another. That's, that's rough. That is mm. rough. That's how I feel right now. When my work's telling me to learn this whole new thing. That isn't, that isn't <laughs> what I got my degree for. Um, <laughs> well, you all leave as he stays to research things and make way to Pashan's potions. And it's the same, it's a it's not the same shop because it was like it was made out of, it was like a crystalline mm -hmm. bottle shape. And it's now it's just this mm -hmm. ordinary like looking building. Okay. Knock knock, bonjour. Uh, you Monsieur said, Pashan. You can see uh the half elf bureau Pashan working behind the counter. 
and who doesn't have the same southern accent as his sister or sibling he uh, says oh of course hello uh, welcome back uh, heard you all had a very rough night it's all everyone's talking about uh, I assume you're here for a revitalizing elixir of some sorts is that yes. an, a little information? Oh, of course. Information is extra. Uh, well, Molly, more just a uh, check-in. Uh, how is your family these days? Oh, you know... Um, um, uh, father is doing his thing. And, uh, Kenna is doing their thing, I suppose. Excellent. Uh, are, do they have their own shop now? Uh, they're still helping out with this shop in Anandil City. Like I mentioned last time you asked me. Right, of course, yes. Uh, a lot has happened since then. We are just merely refreshing ourselves. You must have had a very long night. It's been a very long week or so. Leading up to the last night, you could say. All right. Uh, so you're here for questions or potions? Yeah. Potions. All right. Uh, anything in sp anything specific? Uh, is there like a is there like a shelf or bin of like potions without labels on them? And no, like he got discount bin or he something? got rid of that. Damn. He said no. Damn it. That doesn't. Ha that never happened in this timeline. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> I wanted a now mystery with potion. now with his sibling <laughs> still overseeing the business at the headquarters oh, in Anandil City. Yeah, Kenna wouldn't have let that. Would have been like, okay, what is this? <laughs> so yeah. The hell is this, bro? So <laughs> get rid of it. I, uh, I just have potions, health potions, revitalization tonics that make you feel a little better when you've had a rough night. <sighs> You know, oh, am like I that. still exhausted? Do I still have a level of yeah. exhaustion? <laughs> cool. I, I will take one of those. Alright, uh, 200 gold for the revitalization tonic. Two. Oh, your sibling is driving up these prices. No, it's fine. Uh, of course, it's this is actually cheap compared to the others. <laughs> it's alright. Uh, I'm a very successful adventurer. That's not real. We gotta spend it somewhere. You alright? Uh, I'm gonna fork over 200 gold for the <laughs> revitalization potion. Okay. And as soon as if as soon as you drink it, no levels of exhaustion. It just like instantly like ener energizes. Oh yeah. Wow. So, I'm curious. Bright life. Can I do a potion that'll make me bigger? Like when I walk, but only for a little bit. Uh, uh, you know, Karen, I could do that for you if you wanted. Uh, well, I have a potion that makes you smaller. Let me disappear. Uh, I have a potion that makes you huge. Oh. For 24 hours. How much? Uh, pulls out the potion and it's like in a solid gold bottle. Inside, you can see like little bits of like where you can see the liquid inside and it's pale white with the tongue of a giant clam kind of floating in it. Uh, this is one of the more expensive potions. This was oh, wow. brewed by my father back in the day, and no one has had the coin to be able to purchase such a potion. Ah, well, that might be true. Just give me the number. <laughs> uh, yeah. Let me go through my. He pulls out a book and starts like flipping through it <laughs> to see if he can figure it out. Cause it's a legendary potion. Oh wow. What did y'all have? Yeah, so... Hold it in the book. Okay. Okay. 
Uh, roll 2d6. Uh, grin. 2d6. There we go. Boom. boom. Rolling. You become 12 times larger. <laughs> Double sixes. Nice. Uh, okay. That's probably really expensive now. <laughs> you grow 12 feet. Uh, so... Look... Yeah, so luckily, consumables are halved. Uh, you're looking at around 150,000 gold. <laughs> well, that's pretty, pretty sure. You got this. It's why it's under lock and that, don't you? It's why it's in, under lock and key, and protected. Oh, yeah. is it like magically protected? You'll never yeah, know. Yeah, that's a bit, that's a bit more than I can, I can do. Yeah, yeah so 300,000 gold, but halved for potions and scrolls, so it's 150,000. Here, I was just looking at the... Uh, I was looking at a potions list, sorry. Um, yeah, I don't know. Right to God. <laughs> I have another potion, but it's only for... It's only for like a tiny, tiny amount of hours. Not twenty-four. This potion, Chick's the expensive one, makes you incredibly strong as well. Oh. If you want just a basic potion, then. I mean, yeah. it's not about what at this point. It's what I can afford. <laughs> you know. Let's see. Hmm. It's okay. I mean, no rules. I'm just uh, roll a d6. I mean, okay. Pulls out another potion. It's uh, uh, the red in the. <laughs> oh, Why oh, am I rolling all sixes? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, why can't I do this for damage? Okay, so come on. Cool. Uh, pulls out another potion. It's the red liquid continuously expands from a tiny bead to color the clear liquid around it and then contracts. Okay. Uh, this is a potion of growth. The other one was a potion of giant size. Oh. This one puts you under the effects of the enlarge reduced spell for between one to four hours. Oh. Uh, and it sells for 300 gold. Oh. Ah. See, so you'd go from like that six. Would... In, you go from like six, inch, six inches tall or whatever you are to like a foot tall. <laughs> yeah. So you'd, you'd go from tiny to small. <laughs> oh, okay. And you know I could do that for free. I could cast enlarge on you, and you would go from tiny to small. I thought that was just like a Von Karen Torture thing. You know, it is a spell that I can prepare and cast on other people. I just have not have very much need for it. So I have not hmm. prepared it. I was just thinking of a girl for fun. Anyway, thank you, uh, Mr. Prashan. Yes, absolutely. Of course, if you ever come back with 150,000 gold, you know what's on the table. <laughs> Do you want to be the size of a giant for 24 hours? <laughs> you only need yeah. to spend an obscene amount of money. Yeah. Grins out of there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Would you like to get anything, Blitz? Uh, I will also say, no, on, the walk, on the walk over here, the city's magic shop is gone. Oh. Makes sense, okay. Prashant's potions has created a monopoly. <laughs> no, there's just no magic shop. <laughs> yeah. I don't want anything. I don't have any money to spend. Thank you, though. So that's the funny thing. Flitz. You have whatever Ant you have whatever Antir had in terms of money. Zero. Oh, he gave it all the torture. Perfect. <laughs> we did give it all the torture. All torture. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so nobody. Yeah, you exit. You exit. Pashan, you exit. Pashan's potions. And now it, it's the amount of time I walk around the city. The sun's probably like starting to set. Cause it, yeah, you you left it in at like four p.m. So it's probably like six. All right. 
We need to plan for what we do. So we got. We need to. Maybe we have to go back to the library and look up any art stories of artifacts. We might have to check into the fiction part. Look up stories of artifacts that might help us against Arcane Spain. I think, getting I think in I... there, or fighting stuff in it, and do it top of the ground. I have a plan about that. Uh, huh? We can go to the academy. I have a means of getting us there. Okay. They have an extensive collection of knowledge kept, I imagine. Yeah. Um, but I didn't want to just make y'all go without consulting you first. No, that sounds good. So whenever you're ready, I could... We, we don't have to do it tonight. We could do it tomorrow morning. Yeah, maybe next session. <laughs> yes, that, that is the seven plan. Set of, uh, there's about seven sets <laughs> till sunset. So yes, maybe, maybe, maybe later. Um, but why don't we? What, can we get a beverage? Can we get something to drink? Uh, uh, chips or We apparently we repeat what we did last night. Everybody's heard about it. Yeah, let's do it again. What did we do last night? We saved the world. No, but what did what does everyone only you can prevent forest fires. Ah uh, <laughs> But what did we do last night in the city that everyone apparently knows about but us? Apparently it was rough. I'm sure we'll find out. I don't think it'll be bad. I don't think it was anything bad. I think we'd have a lot more people coming at us if we did anything bad. We could always check the wanted poster, see if anything got posted <laughs> in the morning. Yeah, I gotta stop by there. I haven't done it yet. Do we want to do that and then drink? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there is like one of those boards always outside of the tavern, too. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so. so all... See if we got banned from any of the taverns. <laughs> as you all make your way back to like the establishment you're known, um, you do check the board outside and. There are wanted posters, but it's just for random people that you don't recognize. Uh, someone yeah. for indecent exposure, um, stuff like that. <laughs> there's just people posting help wanted ads, nothing like super serious, like, hey, there's rats in my basement, help. Stuff like that. Uh, I need my I need my wheelbarrow fixed cheap. <laughs> yeah, just a lot of like just cheap, cheap like ads. Um, nothing really calling for adventurers or anything, really. Okay. Um, as the, as the sun does begin to set, as you make, because it'd be like, it's like a two hour walk back to the tavern. So as the sun begins to set, the mint green moon, no longer the shattered black moon that crashed and blew up, this mint green moon rises up into the sky, casts like this kind of eerie green light over everything at nighttime. You walk to the tavern, uh, and as you enter the tavern for a night of drinking, that's where we're going to end the session for the week. And then, yeah, that actually gives you a week to decide what you want to do. Yeah, good luck. Step into the tavern. <laughs> Do you, oh, we can meet someone new in a tavern. Do you stay? Do you stay as Fliss, or do we figure out a way to get a rando in this mix? We'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah, I'll reach out. I have some ideas. I have some possibilities of hitting on. Yeah. We're, if you want to stay, if you want to keep the you know magical aspect going, so that 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 part doesn't. Well, I have a fun. I have a fun possibility. I'm going to talk with Justin about. And El Camerians are on the table now. So. Oh. Yeah, if, an Alchemirian if, likes her style. We have to fucking that, fight. I have that makes idea. me think I might want to do an Alchemirian for uh, no. for Lexus. Ooh, Interesting. Yeah, they're there. Yeah. Yeah, they're they are large size, twelve feet tall. Uh, yeah, that, that's that can be an issue. Yeah. But uh, I go I go from playing a tiny character to, to large. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Uh, cool. uh, good night, everybody, and we'll pick up there next week. All right. It's a whole new world. Bye! Whole new, new world! world.